Hello and welcome to the Saladcast on Sunday the 12th of February 2017. I'm your host Dan Train. Joining me today, Zachary Burgess. If you thought we had nothing to talk about in the last podcast, wait until you hear this one. <laughs> and Robert Kemp. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is amazing timing. I've got some vacuuming starting just outside my room but exactly as we start recording perfect oh, brilliant. <laughs> some, some uh, high frequency eqing needed on the edit then <laughs> yeah might need to do an edit oh well real. how are we all i am average hi <laughs> i am about as middling of the population <laughs> as i could possibly be what you mean average for yourself or average for the population I, I think for for all of mankind. <laughs> for all actually, of mankind. That's probably, actually, that's probably not true, is it? Like, I probably dramatic some 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 uh, activist somewhere will probably put me right in saying that I am vastly outweighed by the number of third world or poor people. I don't know, hence, because, hence, pushing me above the I average think, like, in, on on that front of, of general well being. But at this I'm point, is that what we're measuring? Though I don't know. At this point, isn't like China sort of balancing out the third world countries to some extent, even though China has parts of it that are still quite fucked up. It's like their population is getting so big, it's starting to, their, and their, pop, like their standard of living is going up as well on average. Mm. It's like they might start to weigh it out. They no, might start to average it out towards actual well, you think average. You basically, you're trying to say that things are getting better on average for people. It's because probably China. true for a long <laughs> yeah, just time. Just because of China. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I don't know if their population is actually growing faster than... It's always had loads of people, hasn't it? Is it is it especially more people these days, proportionally, well, like, in China? Relatively thought... recently only just got rid of the one child rule, didn't they? So... <laughs> no, That's yeah. true, but that would suggest that there's, you know, the growth rate slowed, right? Otherwise, why would they... Well, they just don't the give a fuck any longer. <laughs> well, they haven't um, done for quite some time and the, and the law hasn't been put into effect. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. Yeah, maybe. I don't think people followed that 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 closely anyway. Uh, yeah, said. I think they left the country. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. China. 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 Yeah, China. Or China. <laughs> China. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's the really. Great Wall of China. I was looking at, on my phone back at uh, at our previous rounds of Jackbox games mm. now that it storms them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where the, does it the store them? It just stores yeah. them on the website, apparently, for a very long time. Well, yeah, whenever I... Well, it seems to be like whichever device I use to log in, the site knows that I'm using that device and so I can pull up the complete history. Yeah. Because you don't register with the site or anything. No, it's just IP just, address or something. Yeah, yeah or, Mac, or, or Mac address of Mac your address, device or yeah. something. It has some tracking mechanism, so you can always get into it. And, or a cookie, probably. So you can always like just get in and be like, oh, what did I do last time? Oh, right. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of wish it, like, does it actually store the the name? I don't think it does store the names of the people in the Quiplash because it show it like take the screenshot it has is before the names are revealed, right? Oh, so you right. can only see what people wrote. You can't see who wrote it. Uh, probably, yeah. Although sometimes you can infer who did <laughs> well, just by the content. <laughs> well, unless it's showing, unless it's showing the result, right? No, right? no, it's just the no, it's just the two speech bubbles with the words in. Hmm. That's not as good as the t-shirts. Though. No, obviously. you've got to see the t-shirts. And I also ended up just because of, I can't remember what order this happened in. Why I start? Which one of these caused me to do which? But like once I was thinking about. Jackbox, either because of looking at it on my phone or because of thinking of it and then doing this other thing and then going to look at it. Very. I also went back and watched the giant bomb, the one where they did the t-shirt. So that was oh, yeah, pretty yeah. funny as well. Did you, did you ever find out which um, t-shirt Jeff Gersman actually bought? Because he, he said he <laughs> bought one off that off the off the. Oh, can you do that? Well, yeah, presumably yeah. he had to buy the one that wasn't the badly drawn Homer Simpson because you, <laughs> oh, right. you wouldn't have been able to buy that one. Well, do you reckon they care? Or do, or do you reckon it's they stated say... on the page where you order them? Where it's oh, like, is it? <laughs> the copyrighted material, no matter how badly drawn, they get refused. <laughs> oh, right. They have a refusal process. <laughs> I yeah, I, I sort of assumed it would just be automated and they wouldn't care. It would just come out of printer yeah. somewhere and someone on the, on the production line is going, that's funny. Shove it. No, I think they probably have to. Not, yeah. 
I don't think they can go around printing like swastikas and stuff just because people have drawn them. I don't think that's. Can people do that with like because? I I I I made an Akaraga shirt once, didn't I? And it's like it just um, like that's clearly copyrighted material right there. Just putting their logo on a shirt because it's like it's a cool logo. <laughs> you didn't print it commercially. No, that's true. You print it for like a service. Yeah, that I guess charges twenty dollars. I guess you're right. If it, like, does that count if you're printing it for yourself? It's probably okay. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think they can stop you printing something for yourself. It'd be like painting a picture and putting it on the wall in your house. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> this is a bit of fat. <laughs> <laughs> now Rob's looking at RPGs. Yeah, I, can, I, was, I was just trying to browse through one, see if there's one worth mentioning. It's just it's like a troll face saying fiddle minus ticks. <laughs> or, a turtle, <laughs> or a turtle in a fire. And the quote is, not the best time. <laughs> yeah. These games are good, listeners. Check out Jackbox Party oh, Packs. They're available on Steam and PS4 and Xbox and everything else, I think. It's, it, it's weird. TKO is a weird one, isn't it? Because it takes a, the payoff is quite long, long-winded, well, isn't it? It takes a while to get there. Well, and, it's, and it's unfortunate that not everything you do can has to be used. Sure. Like, a lot of it is thrown away. But The problem with it is, like, not, it's like, it's a long setup, and then the payoff isn't actually that long. Like the voting get, takes such an incredibly short amount of time compared mm. to the actual creation process, <laughs> even though you're still creating these <laughs> incredibly terrible drawings. There's a picture here of an elderly Freddy Krueger, and the quote is, uh, <laughs> is that Freddy Krueger. I'm not like, entirely sure that's meant to be Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh, it looks like he's got claw hands. I think he's like throwing glitter in the air, isn't he? <laughs> More red streaky glitter. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the quote is death to wobbles, <laughs> just to go with that. <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh man! Well, there's the, the 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 one that we ripped off of um, Cards Against Humanity with uh, Pac-Man drinking a white fluid, or <laughs> the very happy crab saying, "That's life, Jim." <laughs> <laughs> or or the incredibly badly drawn crab. No, that's not even a crab. That's not even a crab. This is like Salad Fingers sort of guy. With, and the quote is just like, "Where's the eggs, mate?" <laughs> Really stupid. <laughs> really stupid. Oh, but it's, it's, it's if you if you like that kind of random, it's a game for you. <laughs> well, if you well, have if several people cat. recognize each other's kind of random yeah. <laughs> in a way that makes it functional. <laughs> Apparently, that uh, that session you just drew a lot of crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't draw any crabs. Well, no, I didn't mean you. I meant <laughs> the group that you were doing yeah, that with drew a lot of crabs. Multiple crabs. <laughs> Oh, I love that one. Two smoking foxes, and the quote is, vivisection isn't so painful. <laughs> it's incredibly well drawn. Uh, anyway, sorry. Things you can't see on yep. a podcast. Exactly. Play that game. Games we didn't play. Yeah. Games that I watch people play. That one time. That and one thought time. about for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it's like those two things, one of those obviously leads to the other, but I don't remember what the like the primer for both of those was. Why I was thinking about that at all. Hmm. <laughs> what's some, what's some, well, nightmares, of course. So we're in your dreams. We, we've created problems so. for you. You're, you're emotionally traumatized. I don't know why I remember what it was. Someone. Someone on giant uh, on a forum post I was reading on Giant Brom referenced the shirts that they made. Oh, right. And I was like, oh yeah, that was funny. I'll go and watch that again. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, the badly drawn Homer Simpson with the <laughs> with the coat underneath that just says back off man, I'm a scientist. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Because <laughs> you know, you gotta combine two random products together. <laughs> That's proper, um, like, English style, Yeah, proper knock-off yeah. Japanese English t-shirts. <laughs> get, your, get your references mixed up. But also just, even without the Ghostbusters reference, just Homer Simpson saying, back off, man, I'm a scientist. That's pretty funny in itself. Oh, <laughs> even if you don't get the Ghostbusters reference. I, I do repeatedly think of that English shirt we, we, we found online where it's just a picture of Africa and the tagline under it is Asia. <laughs> 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 pretty great uh, what else have you been watching then has anyone been watching anything good I've been actually watching a, like I've been trying to watch people play games but the trouble is that like 
I've already watched people play all the games that I want to watch people play, I guess. <laughs> well, no, it's not even like... I only want to watch people play games that I've played because I don't want to be yeah, like, spoiled for yeah, other there's, stuff. Yeah, there's a logic to that, yeah. But then, like, even then, I'm not, I don't really want to watch people play all of them. Like, you, you, I you should be watching other people play the games that we've done for Happy Salad so you can critique <laughs> well, them Well, yes, versus I have us. been doing that it's like, uh, to, Just to judge if we're any good, you know. I, I bet we come off as no. No. But, <laughs> but like... Like, I don't want to watch people play, like, Factorio or Terraria, like, shit that takes an incredibly long time for anything to actually happen. No. Unless it's, like, super edited, in which case it's probably all right. Which mm. is like, here's, here's one hour in, here's five hours in, <laughs> or something. Mm. It's like, what I actually want to watch is people play, like, puzzle games, like Infinite Factory and Fez and stuff like that. But then I've already watched all of those. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and then no new people are doing them because those games are old at this point. Yeah, I must, I must confess, I don't really watch many Let's Plays myself. Like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll occasionally watch the Penny Arcade fi- First Fifteen sure. stuff because it's them going into something blind, and that's always fun. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's where like the theory of watching people play stuff falls down for me as well. Is like blind is obviously better. Mm. You know, when people doing things that they already know that where like what's happening. But then you equally have the classic watching people play games on the internet problem of like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Why are people so incredibly <laughs> unobservant sometimes? Yeah. But like um, the several different people I watch play bits of Fez where it's just like, how do you not even like know? Like, oh. well, the thing is, the oh, one... Fez must be quite funny, right? <laughs> just seeing people bamboozled completely. Well, yeah. Be like, oh, like, what's going on here? Some people, the, I think the most annoying one that I saw was like, there was a guy. He got to the he got to the place where you learn the Tetris code. Yeah, the specific place where you learn the Tetris code, and there's the thing that reacts to what you're doing that tells you how to interpret the Tetris code. And he's like, he keep, like this guy has at least worked out that the map shows you like information. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, I've cleared this screen because it's gone golden. Oh, there's still bits in this screen. And he gets to that screen. He's like, okay, there's a secret here. Well, I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> it's like. It's very obviously doing a thing when you're doing things, and there's this other thing on the screen, which is a code that you haven't managed to work out anywhere else in the game. Where do you think it's going to teach you this? Right. <laughs> so it just didn't... Yeah, that's going to cause him problems later on. Yeah. Well, I think... I don't know. I think maybe that guy had, and was, like, thinking that it was more like an actual game, I guess. Like, because he'd already. No, pick- I don't know what to do with this. I haven't got anything, any power. I yeah, to do he, this he was thinking he was going to like pick up a yeah, power up yeah. that would teach him something at some point. Get an item <laughs> that does a thing. But you know, if you're if you were going into Fez without any knowledge of what Fez was, that could happen, right? You could sure. look at things like you you could see the clues just in the world and be like, oh, that's a neat little detail. <laughs> Carrying on, I got to spin the world, shouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he did at least like. I mean, he got the QR codes, but I mean that's kind of obvious, I guess. Yeah. But like, does is is having a QR code enough of a hint that it requires you to do something? Mm. Like the game isn't just going to at some point t- toggle a switch and then you'll like be able to understand the language or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, I think I no, guess not. Probably not. So yeah, I watched stuff like that. But then, oh yeah, because because the QR code just described the right buttons trigger, you right to press. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I like watching people play antechamber. I mean, that's sort of more bearable. But then again, that's still a kind of like it's games where the like I guess those kind of games where it doesn't things aren't explicit because mm. that's how the game is. And it's meant to be like that, but like. You run into the other classic problem of like when people think that they've interpreted something, but they actually haven't. <laughs> right. Oh, they're reading into something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we I did that when I first started playing The Witness, right? Those first set of puzzles from the accidentally solved one, and then was like, oh, okay, that, that, so that's what that rule is, and then moved on to the next one. It's like, oh, that's not the rule at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you had to come up with a rule. Yeah. But you just hadn't immediately, out what dispro- the rule immediately was, disproved it. Yeah. But yeah, with Andy Chamber, it was like, you know, I guess, again, it's another thing for the same, same sort of situation as Fez, where it's like, you get to a door that you need 12 
cubes to open and by this point you've got the gun so you can pick up the cubes mm. and put them down but like you haven't really realized that like going to the map resets everything and oh yeah you have to be able to work out a way to get to that point from somewhere else via a route that lets you bring the cubes to that point or whatever yeah so it's kind of subtle but you know frustrating when it's like uh, it must be you haven't interpreted well, this correctly it was. It must be weird. We're in the position of like you. You know, we've already played that game, right? We've already. Sure. Figured, we've already figured that stuff out, so it comes naturally to us because we remember it. <laughs> sure, but I still think there's like a certain level. I mean, it's the thing that they always say about like on Giant Bomb. They always talk about with Quick Looks, where it's like it's hard to talk and play a game at the same time. It's mm. Like if you're trying to keep up a reasonable pace of constantly talking. You're maybe not devoting quite so much attention to actually looking at what the fuck you're well, doing. <laughs> well, this is, well, this is why people play those horror games, right? Because they don't have to come up with things to talk about. They just get a face full of funny every now and then. Like, <laughs> well, semi funny. That stuff's grown old from now. Yeah. It's, like, it's, not, it's not even remotely entertaining to me anymore. Seeing someone go, Whoa! No. But. In fact, that wore off in about a day. Yep. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get why that's that still wore off in about one video. <laughs> yeah. The old Slenderman days. Slenderman. So yeah, I watched. I, the, you know, I've reached a point where I've gone down my Steam list and been like, "What could I possibly watch a video of?" But then once you get into the smaller stuff, it's like, are there even any decent quality videos of this thing? Like oh. when I tried to watch the, someone else's video of Cargo Commander since we've done oh, right. that recently. Yeah, it's like, well, there's a couple, but you know, they're not exactly not not that greatest. watchable. Yeah, was it? I watched. I did watch one series of Let's Plays because I was. Actually, no, a couple, because I got I got curious about something. I had a memory of an old PlayStation game um, I used to play around my cousins sure. um, called Street Racer. Like, mm. real, the most generically named game ever. It's like Street Racer. It's like, oh, no, that's actually... And I thought, oh, if I search for this, I'm going to get a billion results of various games across history. It's like, no, no, there was just one Street Racer. Um and and it, yeah, I, I sort of in my head had it had like I remembered it being a, a sort of Mario Kart esque game, but because it was on PlayStation, they'd turn these, they'd sort of polygonized the tracks a little, mm. like put some trackside scenery on and stuff. But it was still basically like you're driving around Mode Seven, like it wasn't that good. But in my head, I just remembered it being a bit more, a bit better than it was, right? <laughs> a bit more, a bit but better handling, a bit better, like more. Decent power ups and some of that less annoying sound effects. No, that game is garbage. <laughs> like it's really bad, and it's just like, wow. What? Like, how did I? I guess as a kid, I misremembered that completely. Um, but then that led me down a slightly interesting rabbit hole of like, oh right, apparently that game came out on a billion and one platforms. Hmm. Like there was a SNES version and a Mega Drive version and an Amiga version. And it's like, okay, what on earth were those? And it's like the SNES version it was a Mode Seven game, of course. It was Mario Kart. But then, like, the Mega Drive and the Amiga didn't have Mode 7. So it's like, how did they, how, what did they do? And it's like, oh, they're a bit like Outrun, you know, Rasta racing games, I guess, where the turn just sort of happens on screen and you have to move with the screen. You know what I mean? Like those old, those old, yeah. like, yeah, like, like old, old Outrun, I guess. Yeah. And it's just, it's a completely different game. <laughs> Should have done, like stunt car racer. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that because that was the next thing I looked at. Okay, because it's like I had that exact <laughs> thought process. It was just like, oh yeah, stunt car racer. That came out on a million and one platforms. It's like, how did that look between them? And it's like, oh, oh, because a bit of my, a bit of me was hoping. Um, I hope there was a version better than the Amiga version because that was okay, but I'd quite like one with frames, <laughs> like one that runs. It's like, no, no, no. The Amiga version's the best. The Atari version's pretty good. You make of it a little bit. There were some real dodgy versions as well, like ones that are just wireframe, yeah. like rather than proper, like filled in polygons. And it's looking back, that game is kind of impressive, yeah, right? Really like, how, how did it do what it did on an Atari and an Amiga? Like, running, running a yeah, polygonal racetrack with fairly all right physics. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's yeah, an amazing thing, Jeff Crammond. Yeah, he's a genius. Because the only other sort of, I uh, only ever, I only remember two other polygonal games on Amiga. Well, that's a lie. Two only that like that didn't require upgrades or uh, extra other Amigas other than the A five hundred. One of them was Elite, 
because of course. Mm. Um, and the the other one was um, um, a, a version of Daytona, like well, not the Sega's Daytona, but a sort of like a a, a Daytona inspired racing game that like ran at like two frames a second, right? And uh, drove around ovals and stuff like that, and it was really hard. I don't remember. And, 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 and yeah, Stunt Car Racer. I don't remember any other poly- polygonal stuff on the Atari that I had. No, it was all sort of either rastered, wasn't it? Or... I, do you think Road Wars was actually polygons? No. Not very many, but they would, like. Mm, no, I bet because they all moved in those fixed positions on screen. They didn't actually sort of smoothly move or randomly. Oh, yeah, I guess. It was all sort of, they, they all had fixed locations and they were just a colour, so they only had to have rendered them once and it's a palette swap. I don't know if it's a palette swap. <laughs> I think it was just like a two frame animation. Mm. There's any reason to play that game, really. It was a bit it's, like we're going back to that. It's like, what the hell is going on? It's just, it's just a weird mess of a game. Well, yeah, I expect that it was like it probably made more sense if you maybe had a manual or something. Mm. I don't know. Like, for, for context, listeners, because no one would have played this game. <laughs> no. Nope. Did we even play it on our Atari run through? I can't remember. Uh, I, I don't think we did. No, maybe we should go back to that. Um, yeah, you're, 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 you're basically like, the um, uh, what are those droids from Star Wars episode one called the one yeah, droidicas or something? Yeah, so droidica. not because it was like you were an actual sphere. Yeah, like you had a weird sp- spherical shell that went around the whole thing. Except you weren't really a robot; you were just like a gun turret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of driving along this road that encompasses a planet. Like it goes around a, a bit like a halo, basically. But there's a planet inside. Yeah, and. uh you had to shoot all the barriers off this road for some reason. Well, you had to shoot the green ones to d- deploy the ramp up to the next level yeah. of the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But why were you doing this? Why were you destroying the barriers? Why were you creating a, a health and safety hazard on these very carefully constructed roadways? Who knows? <laughs> and, and of course, because it was Atari where you had an entire one button on the joystick, it had mm. an impossible control scheme. <laughs> Yeah, where well you could make your turret start spinning, and it's like, oh god, I'm spinning, and I stop spinning. Yeah, like you know, there was some way, there was some trick to do with like holding the button or something that would start the turret rotating, and then you could press it again, it would lock in place. Yeah, so you up really had something because up didn't really have no, much of... no up was rolling the ball. No, was that not down? No, down was unroll. <laughs> oh yeah, but surely when you're un- oh maybe it was down when you're un- already unrolled. Yeah, then? that might have been it. Or down on a button and then left and right or something. Yeah, anyway. It was, so it's critically it was... important that like what you had to do was get your turret rotated to the correct angle to shoot a certain distance down the road so you could actually have enough time to react to shoot the things you need to shoot. Mm. But then there was also enemies, so sometimes you needed to re-rotate to shoot the enemies on the road. It was a nightmare. Yeah. As is often the case with a single button. And in two-player mode, there wasn't really enough room on the road for the two of you, so you'd end up hitting each other into obstacles quite a lot. <laughs> But you, couldn't, you didn't really collide exactly. Well, you didn't really bounce. You no. just sort of, sort of you restricted each other's movement. But... but then you had enough. Then at least you had one. Per- you didn't have to keep rotating your turret because one person could shoot at each side of the road. Yeah, true. <laughs> if you had to keep rotating your turret by yourself, that would probably be real difficult. Mm. And then there was like weird, like, you know, this is one of those games where obviously we didn't have a manual because of my. Skanky Atari ST just was like a box of random discs, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So this was one of those games where it's like we 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 had to figure out the mechanics just by playing it. Mm. Whereas like you have to roll into a ball and then drive over the blue arrows because that gives you an orbital which shoots forwards all the time, so that helps you deal with the enemies. Mm. And then you get like three of them if you do it three times. But then if you get hit, your your sphere shield thing gets destroyed, and then you're basically fucked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. roll up any longer. <laughs> you can't get it back either. And you had to roll up when you were going through the electro beams or destroy the panels that create the electro beams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's the fun of trying to work out what the fuck is even going on in these games. That was uh, that was pretty much all, all we could do, though, in fairness as kids. Like, just, we've got, we've got two, two machines, the Atari and the Amiga, both with random boxes of random discs. Let's let let's go. Let's see what happens. It's a bit like actually in fairness, it's a bit like what I do in MAME nowadays, isn't it? Just like let's fire up a random game from MAME and see what see if we can figure out if it's any good. Yeah, well this is not exactly the same. You you want you kind of wanted to do that in order to determine whether you should keep them. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a bit of that, but yeah. Yeah, I've ended up with a lot more of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I don't know. I guess that's something I did. I did, I did muck, like, no, okay. legality of emulation warning, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I did muck around with MAME quite a lot over the last last couple of weeks just to try, try and, just, I don't know, get a decent ROM. Because I need the emulators are all updated and stuff like that. And then when that happens, your ROMs might not be compatible anymore. Like there's a weird, like Mame is super awkward at the best of times, but just to make it more awkward, but like all of the game ROMs seem specifically dumped for specific versions of Mame. So whenever you get an updated version of the emulator, in order to like, ah, then maybe this will run my games better. It's like, oh no, it's actually broken more games. That's why you that situ- those kind of situations you always never install in the same folder. Just make a completely fresh install in a version numbered folder. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is pretty much what you have to do now. You you have to have have uh, like so you, the easiest way to do it is basically just download a, a complete ROM set, which are like massive massive files, um, but then they will be versioned, mm. um, and uh, you can get update sets as well to be like oh take your ROM set and just apply this to it and it will upgrade it by a version, um, and it's a uh, yeah it's basically a friggin' nightmare, and. My my problem is always trying to configure the like so so I try to play with the fight stick of course, Naturally. but then like every time you fire up a game it's like all right I've got to try and figure out what the buttons for this game should actually be in order to make it playable. Like if you if you find a fighter of some kind it's like okay how do I map these buttons to actually be in sensible locations? Yeah, yeah. yeah what is what is the correct config of this? And it varies every game, every game. Some of them break the rules. Some of them don't use like the the, the one two three four five six classic arcade layout, well, some and, of them, some... and, and we'll just mix the order about. And it's like, well, that's not right. Wait, like, and then you got like just like some games that just wouldn't have even used a stick or something. This game originally was on a trackball, so yeah, yeah, yeah. like working with that. Yeah, I did manage to get Time Crisis running. But you don't have a gun. No, but that means I could. <laughs> if I've got a PC gun, I could play Time Crisis. I wonder how a PC gun even works. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, a bit like the bit like the Wii. You have to put like a sensor under the screen and calibrate it, and then it will. Sure, but then like what? Does, it's uh, accurate enough. What does the driver send to the mouse? You can figure it as a mouse. Okay, and then and then the emulator can just use that, and then. But so there are ways of making it work. It's um, it's kind of well known now, um, but. The ultimate goal would be like so I can rig that to a um, PlayStation Two emulator with enough la- with, an, with with as little lag as possible, so you can actually play like my cop my copy of Time Crisis Two, you know, the best version of Time Crisis Two. Yeah. Or or since it uses the mouse, you could literally use your light gun on Dan's stupid Gaze Factory cheating game. <laughs> you probably oh, could. Yeah. I would be done. <laughs> That'd be impossible. Well, I don't know. That'd, That'd be easier. easier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. Be, yeah. I mean, you'd have to, like, it would probably be difficult if it was just running at, like, 800 by 600 res or whatever. Yeah, you'd have to scale out somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you could also, like, you know, you could play the old PC versions of shooters as well, like Virtua Cop and. Did they, I don't know if they put out an actual House of the Dead PC version Not after before they went typing yeah. in the dead anyway. All you needed was typing. Yeah. <laughs> it's clearly superior. Yeah, so that's what I was mucking about. I don't know. I, I, I watched the Lego... Look, we went back to watching. I watched the Lego Batman movie. Oh, yeah. Is it good? It's not the Lego movie. No. So I heard. It's uh, it's all right, but it's like typical sort of bit of a mess. Kids film. You know what I mean? It loses some right. of the charm for the original one. As it starts off genius, as as most like kids' films do, you know, like like actually a lot of comedy films do. It's like here's where all the jokes are. <laughs> here's where the trailer is. Yeah, we can, yeah. Want to show anything after the first five minutes? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then and then when the plot kicks in, it's like here comes tedium. Here comes we're gonna bash you over the head with the message of family. And it's just uh, all right, right. Okay, you ran out of ideas, didn't you? <laughs> 
Oh, well. Wait, you made obvious cliches. Yeah. Like, oh, Batman works alone, but oh, no, now you need a team. Of course it does. <laughs> everything because is awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Yep, exactly. exactly. Everything is awesome. <laughs> It's the Lego dream. It's the Lego dream. There was one one joke in it, right? <laughs> Spoilers for a very minor. You will you may easily miss it joke, but on the back of one of the Batmobiles was a number plate, right? And it said Wayne Carr. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that sounds a bit like someone snuck that one in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, absolutely. It's like I, I was just sort of looked at it in disbelief for a second. It's like. Really? Really? <laughs> really? That's a very British joke as well. It's a bit weird. Yeah. I, I, I guess that's how it got passed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because no, no one noticed. Wayne oh, Carr. <laughs> that's dumb. Um, I shouldn't even be on the back wheel. <laughs> You've all your secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, they, 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 they mess with that in the well, film quite, quite a lot. It's like... <laughs> It's one of those, everyone knows this, but everyone plays dumb kind of things. Yeah. Right. I think it's time waste, for the waste, news. Wasted potential. I would say. Well, yeah. it, not totally wasted, is it? Oh, anyway, yeah. News! <laughs> What's going on? Um, let's see. What have we got? Nothing. Not much not going on. We've got the news that... Um, you can go to E3 as a member of the public, apparently, this year for the first time. If you're prepared e- to pay like $250 to get in. So that's crazy money. I don't know. It is really. Compared to other conventions. Well, I, I, I guess it's, it's a lot. like going to a festival, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, is that a three day pass, though? Or is that like a one day pass? I think it would be three day. That's not so bad. And there is day, early guess, bird but... tickets, I think, which are cheaper. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's well, like going to a conference or something. I was thinking of doing EGX for a couple of days this year rather than just the one. Because, um, I don't know, we didn't get, let's say, after well, after last year, where we didn't really get to, we we spotted stuff that would have been nice to have seen, like, as we were leaving the venue. It's like, oh, God damn it. It's like, it's, so maybe, maybe we might do a two day this year. Mm. Just, to, just to get it all in. And it could be an interesting year, what with Scorpio about. I, I mean, Switch, yes. Switch will be well known at that point, I guess. But like, it could could be the Scorpio. Scorpio could be there. It probably will be there, given that it launches this year. But would that actually be? Would that specifically actually be interesting? Because really, you, well, you want to see the, see how powerful, how much of a beast this thing is. Yeah, but not, how much of the six hundred probable dollar price tag is you get? Yeah, but not real. You're not even really going to be able to see that because you'll be like. You'll, be presumably seeing new games that you won't know how well they potentially could have run on the previous hardware compared to the it's like there's no way of actually doing a direct comparison yeah maybe you're right i mean yeah it's an interesting one i don't know because the difficulty comes i don't know how they really handled pro at conventions right because that sort of just happened before yeah i don't uh, think they did a big no convention thing did because I don't think Pro was even at EGX, really, when we were there. Or at least we didn't get time to go see it properly. Uh, no, it probably was, because we they were doing PSVR was their big thing. Oh, so yeah. I, I, I so bet, that's I something some you can the, show. I bet some of the PSVR stuff was being um, run on a Pro, but maybe. Well, or was it even being run on a PlayStation at all? That's the actual question. <laughs> some, some of it definitely was. Um, Battlezone was definitely running on PS4 and stuff like that. So it's because um, I had it all in front of you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's okay. You know, the biggest it's biggest games weird. convention in the world. But yeah, it is a little odd. It's mm. just like I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit worried it's going to cause like the journalists to just sort of start poo pooing it because they already sort of were going off E3 as a thing because they just watch it right. Well, right. presumably it might be quite inconvenient, which is like all the hotels will be even more booked up than they already are. Yeah, really. exactly. Yeah. I suppose. I didn't even think of that. But I wonder if they'll get you can go to the press conferences because they're the things that matter, and they're not even like. Oh, I bet. I bet you couldn't get into those. 
Mm. You might be able to. Like now, now they won't have to bring in crowds. And they can just. Oh, that's true. <laughs> they yeah, can just yeah. actually have crowds because yeah. everyone watches it online. They want the, yeah. They, <laughs> they, they want a whooping crowd. You just get Joe Public. <laughs> But, but then no one will be as entertaining as the as the crowd Bethesda get in. <laughs> then, well, no, the, that, those that, guys that, that one, be there though because that's their staff. <laughs> like, yeah, that one Elder Scrolls lady. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoop, 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 whoop. And, you know, the Ubisoft press conference usually still had a crowd. <laughs> Somehow, who, who wouldn't want to see the shit that they come up with? <laughs> I'm just waiting for their Just Dance intro this year. That's, yep. What, what, what will it be? <laughs> will there be cupcakes and zebras? And then have to make a transition into some horrible tragedy immediately from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I should laugh, but boy, yeah, I forgot about that. It's like, yay, Just Dance! Oh, terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Yeah, so you can see that in person if you're mental and you want to go to LA when it's super busy. Uh, and, and pay and money hot. yeah so don't do that and uh yeah uh what mm. else we got oh ps4 so might, might... boost mode we've got that yeah so that's like an interesting a, one this came along with the firmware update for the ps4 so that now you can sort of basically unlock the extra power and make it available to games that have never been patched that were around before ps4 pro was a thing uh, to see whether you get better results or whether it breaks them. It's up to yeah. you. Yeah, it's an interesting one because <clears throat> it came out that, uh, well, you know, we sort of saw this earlier in last year when um, Xbox One S came out and when it's marginally improved GPU in there to handle yeah. 4K Blu ray, um, it, it, it gave uh, frame rate variable games a bit of a boost um, where they yeah. wouldn't they, they you know they, they wouldn't drop so many frames at times or That's games with uh, games that were adaptive in some way like Halo Five wouldn't adapt its resolution down quite so frequently or quite exactly. so far. Um, so so I think this is the same happen. deal, but with considerably more extra power than yeah. That. So the risk is always going to be like in terms of the compatibility stuff that like, like the game is for some reason tied to clock speed because that yeah. it, it, I, I think there are efficiency reasons for doing that like because you can predict it and it's um, you know if the, if the CPU is always running at this speed then it will always work like this and well that is like I'm sure nowadays it's always always bad but it's just like you just wish it would work like it used to in the old days like. You, like Grand Theft Auto 2, where you just overclock and the whole game just got incredibly fast. Well, that's what I mean. That, that, yeah. yeah, but that's that's the risk, right? You put it, you're turning boost mode on, and you're you're uncapping the the GPUs yeah, but, and but, CPU limitations. That's in not how PS games Pro. work nowadays, though, is it? Yeah. Just well, make them. It probably just make them run worse, actually. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, in, in the land of um, was it um, ports and stuff like that, and the fact that the PS4 is kind of like a PC. You'd think they'd be building it to the architecture, you know, all techniques of PC games, right? Where this this isn't a problem for the most part. Um, it just might not have gone through such rigorous QA that it might. Well, the whole point of it is like an added bonus for things that haven't been officially done, I guess. Yeah. But I don't see why most games, recent games, will have PS pro support and it does seem like a weird thing to uh, uh, like potentially put in the consumer's control though yeah yeah it's oh, just yeah. like an option well it's like an option but then like oh i see what you mean just you're, turn you're... a thing on without necessarily understanding the potential fuck it. like they might just turn it on because they, they heard it that it gives you more power and not realize right. that it could potentially fuck things up i think they do bury it quite deep in yeah. the menus and there's also a very a, a, a weird Description and does have a description, to, yeah. That sort of sounds like you probably need to know what you're doing. Mm. Um, a bit like, like I guess if you're going into a beta program, you know, like, <laughs> well, that doesn't stop people from going into those and getting pissed when everything breaks. <laughs> yeah, true. Apparently, yeah, though, according I mean, to like Digital Foundry, it, it does help with quite mm. a few titles, so it's definitely a good I'm thing. A, I suppose I'm a little surprised that Sony didn't just curate this, right? And make well, yeah, it so it just make it a, so like a list of games on is, yeah, like hidden yes. on the back end that can toggle it on. Yeah, and it's you know sort of in the same way that Microsoft curate their own backwards compatibility and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that, yeah, you know, that Sony just go in and just be like, yeah, we tested all this stuff. It's good. <laughs> Maybe we're, we're, we're turning all that time doing testing. Yeah, we're turning it on for you if you want it. Um, 
Well, obviously, yeah, <laughs> it costs, but for a feature they probably didn't plan to add, like there's probably not a bit of money they wanted to spend. But then you have to ask the question: Why did they bother to add it at all? If they uh, if they've just released so, the PS Pro, where you could just buy a new thing and have more power, surely that's what they'd want people to do. <laughs> well, yeah. So this is the interesting part of this, actually, in a way. It's like, does this mean they're trying to give the Pro a bit more of a uh, you know a, a reason for people to buy it to be like no actually it boosts everything a little like but they have not more of a reason that's less of a reason if you could make your old ps ps4 better just by toggling an option why would you go out and spend all this money you can't no it's only available on the pro <laughs> that doesn't make any sense then either because that's like, the only reason it exists pro even more yeah to, what, to, it's to, only for the pro. the pro because yeah. it has more has more power to spare yeah that's but the then why it. But then why would you want to turn that on for when it's already more powerful than the ring? Because, oh, because otherwise because, it'll clock because Sony down. put a, Yeah, Sony put a very harsh compatibility rule in to be like, so when you run a game that hasn't been patched for Pro, the, the, the console down clocks its GPU and basically cuts half of its GPU off from the other game yeah, to, to, to make the game run exactly as it does on a regular PS4. Unless you turn this option on and then it unlocks the whole GPU to be like, oh, here you go, have all the power... Hope for the best. <laughs> that's not that's not what they should be doing either, because the whole point of that was to make it so that like the old games would be compatible with no actual work. Oh, but they still are. That, I mean, yeah, that, that's no... true. But the way they did that was to be very uh, particular about how they implemented Pro's uh, underclocking when running a normal PS4 game as opposed to a Pro optimized but, game. Yeah, but, but you don't want to like reveal that to people. No, they already came out and said well, that. No, I, that was that was I don't super mean well the known idea. I mean the actual like the actual way it works and like the actual. You don't want to say like the developers have actually made a better game than you are playing right now on your old PS4. You just don't know it because you have because. Like, literally, not even just from the pro upgrade, just if it had any more power at all, it would just run better. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know how you avoid that. I think that's just like, the pro is a better one. Buy this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you avoid that. It just seems like a, like, one of those things that there's no reason for them to have actually revealed the secret behind exactly. No, they probably didn't need the detail on what it's doing underneath to some degree, but it's like it's just like here's it compatible mode will run it exactly like a PS4, or just, and boost mode will run will attempt to make it better. Yeah, or just like not even not even say anything about it. I don't know. Well, I, I guess if they if, if they, they had if, tested if, it for actual compatibility, then they yeah. wouldn't have had to say anything about no, it. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> if they would curated the list and the PS4 just Pro just sort of did it, then yeah, there'd be no reason to even mention it, right? It would just sort of do it, and someone would discover it. Yeah, someone would notice. Oh, this game's running better than usual. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even games. I mean, there are games that are pro optimized that don't really offer extra features. Like I want to say, Last Guardian is one that doesn't actually do much in the way of. <laughs> Because like, that like, might as well be a PS3 game. <laughs> well, it's all it is, yeah. In, in actually, in, in many, in actually, quite a lot of its design, apparently, it's actually sort of PS3 like. Um, but there's, uh, I, I don't know too much. I don't think it does too much when you you put it in pro mode. But the major benefit is there's a frame rate improvement, and it's like, oh, okay, they just turned boost mode on for this game. <laughs> it's, or well, it's 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 stable, more stable than it would be. I guess the worry is that you end up with something like um, Hyrule Warriors, right, where it runs like garbage on a regular 3DS and is pretty much deemed unplayable unless yeah, you have a new 3DS. That's why they specifically made, like, Sony and Microsoft specifically made the big deal about, like, we're not going to break compatibility with it. And it's like, if it runs on, it has to run on the old one and the new one. It has run to run on both, shit. yeah. Whereas Nintendo just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> they were just like, new 3DS is all we care about now. Let's go yeah. the old ones. Although, although yeah, even though they put those mandates in place, wasn't it? Like Deus Ex ran, runs like crap on a pro. Like weirdly, they made the, 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 <laughs> yeah, other, the other. That's nothing happened. to do with the mandate. Yeah. That's just because they fucked up the pro version. Yeah, it? it's like it's supposed to run as well as the original, like or better. I mean, you have, and, like you have to wonder how they actually managed to do that. Like, mm -hmm. how do you make something that's running on better hardware run worse? Because if you think about it, in, if you just imagine it into, in, like, PC terms, it's just like, you've turned up the graphics settings and you've got a more powerful system. <laughs> and it's like, how is that making it bad? Oh, uh, because you turned it up too far. I guess. Yeah. That could be it. 
That's exactly it. Yeah, it's like, well, we need to do that exactly it. Because that's, that happens, right? Like, well, even, you even don't know that machine, in this case, I, though, do you? Even, even on this new machine, I could up things to a point where it runs slower than my old one because I upped them too far. You don't know that that's what's actually happened in Deus Ex's case. No. They've just accidentally turned up their options too high in their hidden options menu on the PS Pro. I bet they did. Like, it's probably, yeah, whatever they did, it didn't work. It wouldn't work well enough. Anyway, boost mode. It's weird. Weird. What else we got? Cool. I think it's cool that it exists, but perhaps it needs like a by game setting, like in in the OS as well. So well, for like... all I know, it does remember it per game. I just have no idea. Like, yeah, that would be the question. Like, how inconvenient is it to turn it on and off if I... you're playing games that you need to turn it on and off for? Yeah, yeah. I bet very <laughs> because it's a Sony OS. Yeah. Well, sure. Well, that's that. Uh, what else is going on? Um, Oh, do you hear this thing about Valve are making three full-size VR games, apparently, at the moment, all in development? So, like, supposedly full-on games, not yeah, so, sorry, demo talk, when type they say full, Yeah, when they say full-size, are we talking, like, portal-sized? Does that count as full? Or are we talking portal-two-sized? Good question. Yeah, but sorry. even portal-sized, three of them would be pretty decent, right? Yeah. I mean, that's bigger than your average VR experience, isn't it? Portal. Well, but the question is, when they say they're making free full games, do they actually mean... <laughs> do they actually mean games? That's or is what they're saying. Really so this is what, experiences? So people have tried to clarify it, and they're saying, yes, games, actual games. Because then no. the question is, like, do they use their their... IPs in VR. Is there well, going to be a Half-Life have, right? game that you can only play? Yeah, but they've used them in the experiences in VR, not yeah, games. That's true. That is you're true. making a new game in the Half-Life universe and you can only play it in VR and it's canonical and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, that how would pissed be... are people are going to be? Yeah, <laughs> that would be mental, to be fair. Yeah. They're, they're totally going to do that. Yeah, they're probably, probably one, of, one of them is totally yeah. going to be that, or it'll be like another spin off in the Half Life universe, well, kind of like how Portal at some, yeah. somehow. I mean, that is. still might be okay. It's like, depends how, like, because like, the way you, the original Portal fit into the Half Life universe was kind of subtle, and like, it only became yeah, it more subtle, important yeah. when, they, when they decided to, like, tie it back in via, like, episode two, where it's like, oh, the Borealis and all that stuff. <laughs> It, what they'll do is they'll, they'll 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 make a game called Virtual G Man, where it's you trying to get to the locations in Half Life Two before Freeman gets it, just so, <laughs> it's like just so you can stand you ominously. The G Man actually just has to fucking sprint everywhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like really briefly compose himself before he walks out a door that he should be able to come through, or, or has to solve a series of puzzles very quickly in order to, <laughs> in order to activate his teleporter to to get where he needs to be. Oh, man, that that is really annoying. Like thinking about it. Just the fact that they set up the whole Borealis thing and they still haven't paid it off after no. like ten years. <laughs> there will never be a payoff. Jeez. Oh, because what you know, what Valve, was the gist Valve of don't that? Don't do threes. What like, was they've they've said, I mean? They've all said it three was, already. All it was was Judith Mossman, right? Was on this chip that was part of the the Aperture Science Research well, what, in the Arctic. What it was Is that was right? The, like so. In Port One, you discover that Aperture and Black Racer were competitors Collab- in some yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, they knew each other, and they yeah. were bidding for military contracts. They were rivals, yeah. And then you know, Aperture made the portal gun, and they then did the Borealis experiment, which seems to have been some kind of teleportation experiment, maybe with some kind of large scale portal. Possibly, it's kind of unknown. Yeah, which teleported the Borealis to a place, but apparently there was Aperture technology on board the Borealis, and that's what Judith Mossman is trying to find in the Half Life games because they think they might be able to use the Aperture technology to somehow help with the fighting the Godline. Right. Because his, I've forgotten. It's it's been so long. It's been twelve. No, how long since Half Life Two? Anyway, <laughs> Judith time. Mossman was a traitor, right? But then, is she a good girl? A good guy? She's not. She was like a, a triple a agent or something. Right. She was like a triple agent. Oh, okay. Well, no, I guess she wasn't actually like in half first Half Life Two. She wasn't necessarily a traitor as much as she just didn't understand that what she was doing was working for the bad guys. Right. Like, at the end, when she turns back to your side and like kicks Breen out of the way or whatever the fuck. I don't, oh, yeah. don't even specifically remember. But she like she comes back around to the good side. 
but you know, then it's like, can you actually trust her? <laughs> Right. She might be a double triple agent or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> a double triple. <laughs> Who knows? Six burger patties. So yeah, the idea that like they weave the Borealis stuff back into fucking Half Life episodes, and then that doesn't half that just the whole story of Half Life never reached its payoff, and now you've got the whole universe of Portal is also leaked into that. <laughs> what were they launching into space at the end of episode two, and why? I've forgotten. They Some needed kind of... to launch a satellite so they could transmit something to do with portals <laughs> they so need to transmit like a like a you know wide scale anti-teleportation thing or whatever to defeat the combine portals right yeah okay and they could only do it by launching a rocket which harks back to the original half-life where you had to launch a rocket with a satellite, on with a satellite in, order, yeah. in order to that that what was, was that actually doing what was that Half-Life doing thing? again was that I something that to get you something. to zen or I really can't remember. I don't know if it was. No, I think it was it was to suppress the cas- resonance cascade stuff, wasn't it? Or yeah. something? Or the portals that were Maybe. appearing. Or just to send a message? I don't know. Oh, I don't think you needed to launch a satellite for that. I can't remember. I think it was important, but anyway. I mean, you, just kind of, you also just kind of needed to launch the rocket to get the fucking tentacle piece out of the way. <laughs> oh, no, wait, that was in a test chamber. Wasn't that one? Yeah, that, that was the different. Rocket. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. See the the the, um, the work they're doing on that Half Life fan project to like basically totally replace Zen. Yeah, it's this summer finally. It's going to be finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, but apparently it's like so different that it's like. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Well, they took the rest of the game. What, it, what is it? Is it the black? Just the Black Mesa project? I can't remember what it's called. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's called Black Mesa. Yeah. Yeah, because they've they've done the the game up to that point, haven't they? And then they yeah, yeah. Led, but they've been from, upgrading that over Zen, the years Zen as was well. Weird. Yeah, because originally it wasn't on Steam and it wasn't fully integrated, and now it's all fully done. I think. I don't know why you'd want to replace Zen? I mean, it was weird, but it's just like if you're going to remake the game, you should remake it the same. But maybe like there's ways you could improve Zen without completely redoing the whole concept. I guess it's just they thought it did, just didn't fit at all with anything else. I think that's where they're coming from, right? It was, it was just so out there, and it's like, wait, what? What's going on? Why are we here? <laughs> that what's was the whole point of the story. Why, why is there a giant cool. floating baby? No. Yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, having a giant end boss was not very hard, you know. Well, the trouble with the giant end boss the was the game. Just like the trouble with the giant end boss was that because of the way the story is told in Half Life, you couldn't possibly have known what the story behind that was because there was no one to tell you it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then when they later told you it, it was like, oh yeah, that does sort of make sense. <laughs> Enslaved yeah. races and the combine and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't very clear, like just from playing it. Well you just didn't know. Yeah. While you were playing it. <laughs> it just appeared to be a generic end boss that you had to <laughs> defeat yeah. to escape Zen, I suppose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man. So yeah, who knows what's going on with these VR games? But uh, maybe they'll all come out at once. Like the three drop <laughs> box. Very much doubt that. The orange I bet they'll come box out of, not... of giant VRness, <laughs> and it will cost two hundred dollars or something, and it will come with a headset, <laughs> like a Vive. Well, that might be a bit, like I guess that is one reason that they could all come out at once if they did it in just a big bundle. They were just like, here, now the Vive actually comes in with some packing software. <laughs> By the time those are made, we'll be on like Vive 3 as yeah, well. Probably. So it'll be like yeah, three true. VR games and a Vive 3 in the box of three <laughs> and Half-Life 3. We'll be yeah. one of them. <laughs> the box of three. Well, anyway, that's a lot Left of talk for not very okay, much so, Yeah, so it's Half-Life yeah. 3, Left Portal three. 3, and Left 4 Dead 3. Left 4 Dead 3, the three box, that's, yeah. That's, that's the box of three. Them. Yeah, exactly. All the games that they've never made because they never get to three. Illuminati confirmed. Right, that's that. Um, Zeg, did you hear about? There's a new game from the makers of FTL. It's called Into the Breach. Yeah, I saw that um, briefly. Into so, the Breach. Into the Breach. So it looks kind of cool. It's like a kind of. It almost looks a bit Advance Warsy. It's like a isometric turn-based strategy game, but with like kind of mechanics where you line things up in straight lines and stuff. I think and shoot along paths. I don't know. Penetration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's kind of cool. And obviously, it's a good developer, so... Um, wow. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you could exactly game. say that. I don't know. 
So can you can you say the you quality not? of a de- developer based on one game? Yeah. I mean, they did do a lot of work. They did that whole sort of expansion thing for free, yeah. I guess. So you could and, say that's something good. But... And, you know, ported it to platforms where it made sense. Like, oh, But that was that even then? I've had. At that point, I guess. Uh, yeah, maybe not. A good question. Put you contract out your port jobs, <laughs> probably. All right, that's that. Uh, Tetris. <laughs> that's, Why don't we talk about Tetris? No, uh, yeah, because just Nintendo were being fairly happy that they've got Tetris back or something. All oh, right, they, <laughs> Have they got it back. Who had the... Ubisoft? Ubisoft actually owns the official Tetris license. Sure, right. but the, 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 have they ever made a game with it? Did they re- did they manage to release a Tetris game while they had that license? Yes, because there was the whole kerfuffle last year about Ultimate Tetris on PS4 oh, being, right. being laggy and broken as hell. Okay, and that one actually... That was a Ubisoft-released Tetris, yeah. But that must have been the only one, right? Because before that, there was definitely a Tetris game on the 3DS. I think Ubisoft have been doing it for a while. But yeah, the the one on oh I don't know about the 3DS one. I know like was it the the Tetris DS of all the bizarre game modes and stuff. That was clearly a Nintendo made thing. Because there was a 3DS one that used AR. It used the cameras oh, did it? to project like a 3D column Tetris what arrangement. It? Yeah, that was quite a long time ago. Obviously, because we're talking about early 3DS stuff. <laughs> Unless Ubisoft just made it for those platforms and then got, I mean, I got guess, Nintendo's. But program. that would have been weird. Yeah. I feel like that would have been something that Nintendo would have just blocked just because. Just because they were like, well, you may have got this license, but fuck you if we're letting you put it out on our systems. <laughs> the Tetris license is weird in general, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. Because Puyo Puyo Tetris, in theory, has to have it, and that's a Sega-made game. Yeah, God knows. Anyway, yeah, they, they put out a very strange... Um, uh, well, let's call it a tweet, but yeah, where it's just like some Russian general shaking hands with Mario saying, oh, <laughs> like, our superpowers can finally work together or something. <laughs> it was a bit, a bit odd. The powers of Italy and Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, the Axis forces are coming again. Yep. again. Except not because of the Russian were allies. <laughs> were they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, technically, sort of, kind, kinda. He's forgetting your World War Two. So. Yeah, it was really a freeway fight, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's just two of the sides were coming from a long way apart. Enemies of en- 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 enemies of enemies. <laughs> let's put it that way. Yeah. No, they were definitely allies. The allies and the and the Russians. They were like we were sending them tanks and shit and money, all kinds of stuff. Or the Americans were anyway, the people with the actual money to send. send. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, that uh, oh, that's almost all I've got. I, I've got something here that's that Steam Greenlight is not going to be a thing anymore, they're going to replace uh, it. With yeah, like there Steam was something Direct. about that, or they're just yeah. going to rebrand it, possibly. Well, Who now they're, they're taking out the whole crowd sourcing aspect of it i think and allowing but then what does that actually leave yeah well, they'll and, vet. What did, and what does that actually achieve did well it sounds like they'll be able or... to vet um you know valve will vet developers or whatever and then they'll mm. allow them to publish things directly uh, that sounds that's like pretty that. much what they already did like the, the green light stuff still had to be vetted that's to true. Some extent. it wasn't just a community vote and then you automatically get on the scene but then how did they like, like some developers just post stuff on Steam anyway. I don't know. Like, I, don't, I honestly don't know what the process is to get onto Steam anyway. Well, I think the, but... the problem with all the shit is the combination of Greenlight and Early Access. Because mm. then you get through the Greenlight process on the promises of what you're going to make. Then you make a certain amount of stuff that allows you to get into Early Access, and then that's the shit. <laughs> yeah. I think mean, the hope is is that this solves the uh, the asset flip developers, right? Like, yeah. Like like classically digital homicide and and the and the quite alarmingly large number of other people that are that um, sort of developer um, and stop that crap from hitting the store. But the question is, they should probably just have a separate Steam as well for uh, graphic novels. <laughs> Sure. But the question, which for some reason my feed is always full of. 
Is there, are there really just that many like that get released? So that that like always in the in in the queue. On it's because you've, ac- you've managed to play something which has one tag that's similar, and then oh, you're fine. <laughs> I bet it was um, a female protagonist or something. Oh god, yeah, female protagonist. That's such a <laughs> that tag seems to just yeah screw everything up. Yeah. But then, like, so the question Tomb is, Raider. Is that, is Tomb Raider yeah, and Racketeer basically. combined creates graphic novels. <laughs> basically. <laughs> the question is, if they get rid of green light, like, and, pres- and, like, theoretically start doing more curation again, like, directly with Valve, does prevent a, the huge pile of shit ending up on Steve Cosley, mm. what are they going to do with the huge pile of shit that's already there? <laughs> does that have to persist forever? I mean, I, I, I think it probably does, I doesn't guess it? it has to, yeah. <laughs> As they've done something really wrong, Steam can't just take it down. I guess they've already agreed. Yeah, but have they really agreed? That was the thing. Like, how much did Steam actually know about what was getting put onto their service? It looks like they're going to increase the fee. Right. <laughs> to what? It was like a hundred bucks. Before. Yeah. So, from a hundred bucks to somewhere between two hundred and five thousand. <laughs> wow. That's very unspecific. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't know yet. Yeah, I mean it's it's a t- it's a tough one because I know I know why they did all this, right? They wanted to somehow they wanted to compete with App Store a little bit and you know try and get that sort of model onto Steam, but it's well, and, they, and even if you follow that model, their hundred dollar tag is steep, right? For, well, for App right. Store and well for App well, for Apple App, App Store at least. Well, the Apple App Store, you have to get it reviewed by Apple, don't you? Anyway? Yeah, yeah, but it costs like thirty quid or something to to go through a review process. But you need a dev license as well, I suppose. Which is mm. yeah, like the hundred the hundred on Steam seemed like too low, which is why this the whole shit pile happened. <laughs> Especially because it was go- it was like a hundred to get into this basically unvetted a- access mechanism. Like if it had been a hundred and you had to go through a valve vetting process, that might have been okay. <laughs> yeah, someone at least had to look at it and well, but then what, like what kind of st- review process would they've had? They had to look at it and just go, well, this clearly isn't copyright infringing, but it's just. It's shit, but it's 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 not going to hurt anyone legally. So, all right. Yeah, I guess at a certain point you can't like if you're going to be a theoretically impartial platform holder, you can't do very much more than just be like it runs, it doesn't crash, and <laughs> and it's not copyright infringement. Yeah, yeah, and it's legally <laughs> just about okay. It's not going to get Steam into trouble. Yeah. Well, that's all the news that's fit to print. Hmm. Oh, except news. not that's all the news that's fit to only exist in a virtual form in a virtual form <laughs> and now it's time for what you've been playing and I think is it Zeg's turn this time around I'm losing who track. knows we I never remember to... doesn't matter right. right well you go ahead <laughs> well I haven't got much to say anyway because I've only been playing pretty much two things this entire last between the last point and last now playing a bunch more Factorio, Factorio. I'm, now oh. play... I'm now playing a mod of a mod <laughs> It's another. A mod it's a mod part. that stacks on top of another mod. Mod squared, which is actually weird because it's like it. It maybe doesn't. I mean, I guess it's a problem of like modding a mod is like the mod is the the primary mod is already changing so much that like then you have to try and keep up with that mod's changes in the secondary mod to like not have things. I assumed it would just be like a like someone took the original and tweaked it rather than no. It's like it's, it is actually a mod that pl- runs on top of another mod. Like well, essentially, I mean, it overwrites stuff to some extent because the trouble with it is that like the main thing that this mod 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 changes is like the material processing, like how you refine the ores and stuff, hmm. and it like it basically doesn't get rid of the other mods recipes so you can you can do it like you basically you can do it the old way or the new way and like yeah it, it seems like maybe they should have gone all the way to completely erase the old recipes if they were going to overwrite it that directly mm. where it's like there's literally two ways to make this thing and one of them is just explicitly better <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
because it seems to be like here's a bunch of like menu options and stuff that you're never actually going to use because it's now irrelevant. So why is it not just deleted? But then I don't know if that's like a problem of the mod trying to keep up with one mod keeping up with another, where it's like if they change anything, then that recipe is just going to reappear because it's not being overwritten by this other thing which specifically targets right, yeah, something that we didn't change or whatever. But yeah, I mean, at that point, you just have to sort of be like, I'm just not going to use the old stuff. I'm only going to use the new stuff to see how it actually w works by itself. Mm. Which is fine in this case, because it's basically it does have options for everything that wasn't that was already it's not really, I mean, the main the ore, the way you refine ore is different, but sort of simplified. It's more consistent across the different kinds of ore, because the mod that it's built on top of the, for the first mod I played was like, introduced more realistic processes for the different ores, I guess. All right. A little more slag, you mean? Yeah, more slag, and like you have to like, you know, this one requires you have to pump hydrogen into it, or you have to pump sulfur dioxide gas through it, or something. Everyone likes a little more slag. <laughs> yep. But then this, this Danny Dyer approved the mod mod. Then like, sort of, it keeps some of those ideas, where it's like you still have to put certain gases into certain minerals and all that kind of stuff. But it like. My, everything is much more consistent apart from that where it's like you're still using the same chain of buildings where it's like you use the ore crusher and it goes into a furnace and maybe that furnace has to take some additional gas it or is. something right, except, yeah. and, or, or it doesn't but it's still the same furnace and then that goes onto the melter and then that goes into the ore casting and it's like so basically all the ores have essentially the same production line but just with like one or two extra pipes lurking around right so it's sort of simpler in that way. All these changes, right? The bit that's confusing to me is like, yeah, like, do they actually change the game in a meaningful way? Well, it just adds complexity mainly. What the simplifying adds complexity? Well, not the simplifying. Okay. Apart from well, the, I think the main thing that's different is in, in <laughs> which is kind of dumb. The main thing that's different in the mod world is just like all the buildings are bigger. <laughs> Okay, so it's more of a space constraint at that point. Like mm. you have to design slightly, slightly differently to take out for the fact that these furnaces are big. You got to get your footprint down. Yeah, got to find better ways to arrange things. But like taking, I guess you could argue that it takes the complexity out of the ore smelting, but it adds it back in in, in like the oil chain. Like all the oil processing that this mod adds is significantly more complicated and there's way more different like gases and cracking processes you have to put stuff through mm. in the oil side so like the metals are easier but the <laughs> oil and gas is a bit more complicated but i'm not sure that's actually necessarily a good thing because like the other mod that i was playing before that that also changed like the metal processing it used a lot it used a lot of like liquid metals. Basically the whole thing was it was just every metal you just melt it down into a liquid and then if you need to make it into a plate you reforge it into a plate or you can use the liquids directly into like molds and that kind of stuff. And then you can like mix the liquids together to make alloys in special in specific buildings. And like I mean that sort of makes sense in some ways, but like the, the actual liquid mechanics of Factorio aren't necessarily that great, really. Like the conveyor belts are like singular objects, and the grabber arms is a way more like actually well-made system than the like fluid mechanics of Factorio. Mm. So having everything basically come through as fluid is maybe not the greatest. Fluid, and it's also really inconvenient because of the way pipes work, because they don't have. But if you have two pipes next to each other, they join together. And there's there's no real way of preventing it. So you either have to have all your pipes one square apart, which makes everything take up way more space, or you have to build all your pipes as like underground pipes. So there's just like a little curve of pipe every ten squares where the two ends of the underground pipe join together, mm. which is just weird looking and also not very not very convenient when you actually want to get the thing out of the pipe because <laughs> then you have to figure out oh, I have to make a little section of actual pipe. So yeah, fluid mechanics not really the best. It's a series of tubes. Yeah, exactly. And we're still waiting for the actual fa actual factorial patch when they're going to introduce nuclear power. 
which may or may not actually be that interesting. Because it's got, you know, it's a new material in the base game, like mm-hmm. uranium, and it has its own refining process, and then you put it in a nuclear reactor and you get power in a, in a way that doesn't require, like, the coal engines or the so- or massive solar farms. And it's like, that's sort of maybe interesting, but then, but again, because it's base factorial, it's like, it's probably not going to be that complicated. No. It'll be like two... Apparently they're going... And is it just a straight up improvement on the other two things? Well, that's the thing that, like, where they wanted to try and balance it, I guess. Where they, because everyone had known for ages where it's just like, use the steam engines in the beginning until you've got enough resources to be able to make solar panels. And then you just make infinite solar panels. Because you can use the robots to, like, you just make a blueprint of, like, an arrangement of solar panels and you just walk around and go, blah, 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 just right, stamping yeah. huge fields of solar panels everywhere. <laughs> And because the air, you know, once you've removed the aliens from a certain segment of the map and walled it off and all that stuff, it's just like it's really simple to just occupy more land, if tedious, because you still have to go through the whole process of killing all the aliens. Mm. So yeah, it's like, is nuclear power going to be a good, like, different option for that? It's like probably, I guess. But again, at some point, you're just going to be making a blueprint of your basic nuclear power station arrangement and just stamping that down as many times as you need it. <laughs> I guess that's like everything in Factory, really. <laughs> Once you get the robots, it's pretty much just you make a blueprint of things you use all the time, and you just use those to make a large number of them. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. So yeah, that mod, the mod mod has been slightly interesting. Mod mod. Although again, I've run into my classic Factory problem of planning ahead too much. Mm-hmm. I'm building temporary factories where it's like, I need to build this factory so I can research the ability to build the better factory that I want to build over here, which means I have to build this temporary factory out of the way somewhere. Hmm. And it only has to be big enough to support the amount of resources for the research, but then does that make it too slow? And, but, and then do I, can I destroy it later? Yeah, and then I have to think about the point where I'm just going to have to disassemble everything and move it to its proper location once I've got robots. <laughs> so to make that significantly quicker. And now that there's so much more fluids involved, it's like, now I have to think about transferring fluids around because that's actually really inconvenient. Fluid transfer, right? Yep. Mm. You could just use a really <laughs> long pipe, but that's not great either. I've got a really long pipe. Do you? <laughs> my fluid transfers. What about a fat pipe? <laughs> <laughs> Can't guarantee that. <laughs> so there's that. And I also played, you know, quite a lot of Rocket League again. <laughs> I've I had a couple of had a couple of sessions of just extreme lemon piles. <laughs> a pile of lemons. Yep. Not, not, not just a steady stream of lemons. Well, I, a, ver- a veritable it's a, it's a stream of lemons that accumulated into a pile. <laughs> An unfinished conveyor belt of lemons. What yeah. is a lemon pile? <laughs> it's a it's a very nasty bowel problem. <laughs> It's very fruity in flavour. No, it's as long as it's not a lemon party. <laughs> no, exactly. Unacceptable. It's just a huge. <laughs> it's just a huge pile of lemon teammates for lemons. Oh, I see. <laughs> in, the, in the Volkswagen Beetle sense. Yep. Lemon. They sure are lemons. So I had like two sessions where I just had non-stop lemons. Citron. Non-stop lemons, and like my rank went down. Two whole ranks. Ooh. Like I dropped all the way from middle blue back down to gold. Wow, that's quite a long way from where you were. Yeah, and I was like, "Holy shit!" It's like non-stop lemons. And then, then of course, there came the point where I was like, "Is it really the lemons, or am I actually really bad? Have I just suddenly become bad, or am I playing exceptionally bad at the moment?" Mm. But then, like the next few sessions, I worked worked it all the way back up to where I started in mid blue again. And I was like, no, nope, it was just lemons and maybe a little bit of me being bad. Oh, I really ha- <laughs> hate that feeling where you've been playing for ages and it's just like, is it me? Am I bringing my entire team down all the time? Because, <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest, I've been having that experience of Overwatch of late. Like, mm-hmm. the lemon pile has <laughs> has hit me there. And it's, uh, you know, the problem with Overwatch is it's so... Um, 
you can't really tell those things because it's like it, it's so happy and saying, "Hey, you did really well." Um, <laughs> it doesn't but, have direct scoreboards exactly. Well, not exactly. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I guess it makes sense because of its hero shooter nature, right? But then, like, you get to the end of a match and you're like, "Oh, I got two gold medals across the categories." It's like, what were, the, what were you guys doing? Well, yeah. Or, or one match where you're pl- you thought uh, you thought you were playing badly and you end up with triple golds, and they're like, "Oh, come on." <laughs> What was my team doing? I mean, to some extent, there's like that is sort of a, there's a similar problem in Rocket League where, like, I mean, it's irrelevant in Rocket League, but when you get those end of round, uh, end of match awards mm. that are meant to highlight things that you did good or did a lot of or a lot of, mm. not necessarily good, I suppose, yeah. but just like they don't actually highlight anything particularly because, like, no, they're they're pointless. Well, I mean, they're pointless in Rocket League, but also they're like. They don't necessarily actually make sense. Whereas, <laughs> like, you could have, you can be the only person on your team who made a save, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, then it just gives you the award for that because you were the only one who did it. Yeah. Or, but then, or you could have the other problem where, like, because it, because in Rocket League it gives everyone or tries to give everyone two. Sometimes it will give ones that don't actually that you weren't the top of. Whereas, like. Oh, I took, I took, I got the shooter award for taking two shots, but that's because that was my best. <laughs> like someone else on my team took took three shots, but he had two other awards that overranked it or whatever. Right? Yeah. Like it doesn't actually oh, make I see. sense. So it gives you like the second best award for it as well, right? Not like the old um, was it? The, I guess you want the old either golden eye or like time splitter systems, right? Where it's just like here's everything you got. Like no one else can get these. Like here's, here's everything you got. Wow. Yeah, but that doesn't exactly work in a game where there's not that many options i suppose no i guess not there's only, very, only so many different things it tracks and when it's like oh you still should just give them all to the player that gone where it's like you get the juggler reward for accidentally doing a juggle one time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just takes off a slot <laughs> <laughs> although the number of like once i got through the lemon pile and started going back up the ranks I'm I'm still always amazed the number of games I get where I just get the bench warmer reward for like the lowest number of ball touches, Fair and right. we well, still win. It's because you're defensive. Well, I know, right, yeah. and it's like it's uh, that's the one thing where I can always look at that and be like, people are so dumb for complaining about my defensive play style because it's like I can not t- I can touch the ball like ten times and our team still wins. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have saved it those ten times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rocket, Rocket, Rocket League player, but I, I never fully understood that. Why do people have such a problem with that? It's like, it's not a problem. Yeah, I don't see people. If you're winning, it's not a so problem. Much. It's a legitimate strategy. <laughs> a legitimate strategy. Yeah, I don't see people complaining about it quite so much any longer. I guess. Although you know, the times when people have complained about it, and I've been tempted to say anything back to them. Is when, <laughs> the thing about playing defensively is like they all complain about me being defensive, but when I play defensive, I can see what you're doing and you suck. <laughs> Just like look at these idiots up the field who can't keep control of midfield at all, so I have to stay defensive. This is the trouble. You see it, and then when they bitch at you for not coming up, you're like, yeah, well, if I if I wasn't in the back, you sure wouldn't be keeping control of the ball, would you? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be back here you'd be flailing around in midfield like a fool yeah <laughs> that's like a fool like a fool yep yeah. is that really what you've been playing as well yeah that's pretty much it wow I don't think I've played any other game that, All I, right. I, that I specifically remember it was still the case where I'm just waiting for the actual patches to happen in March slash April <laughs> When apparently everything is just going to bad and the fucking switch is going to go out. And <laughs> fucking, there's going to be a ridiculous amount of games happening. Play a new game. Get, it's just the time to get out of your comfort zone. Play, play something new and potentially small. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the trouble, isn't it? Because now if I commit to starting something now, it's like how I have to make sure it doesn't last too long. Well, no, you, you start playing something that you potentially won't like, <laughs> is what you mean. Is, is how you do this. Just, I don't want just, to see that. Just hit, some, hit something on your list that, that's like, hmm, this is probably going to suck, but but 
if, if, that's if, what we if, use if, our video if, content if, for. If it does suck, then I can just drop it and move on. <laughs> that's what we use our videos for. To I, yeah, play the shit that we mm, don't care about. I guess. But, but you just you just don't pick something that's coming up on the A to Z scene. That's, that's how that works. I guess. I did. I you know there was a couple of times when I considered going back to XCOM two maybe. Hmm. But you might, that was just because, like, you know, there's been all the talk about the long war patch mod thing finally right. came out for XCOM 2. No, oh, what's that? It's the, like, it's sort like of a the conversion week. mod. It's just like, it makes it, apparently, it just makes it more difficult. And I'm like, I'm not sure I really want that. Mm. Yeah, it just makes it hard. Uh, <laughs> I don't want more difficulty. I just want more balance. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't play that. I just kept thinking about it. Well, maybe next time. Yeah. Right then, Rob, what have you been playing? Is it still a pirate life for you? Apparently, I've been seeing it. Uh, a, a little <laughs> bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, I've been, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm bouncing off it. What was it. I'm still only, what, halfway through the story? <laughs> bouncing off it after having played like 20 hours. Yeah, 20, 24 <laughs> yep. hours. 20, 24 hours into it. And it's... but. But I'm only halfway through the story, and <laughs> yeah. But is that because you haven't been? Is that just because you've been doing a shit ton of side bullshit? I've been doing, I've been doing less of it <laughs> because, yeah, there's a there's the, 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 there is an awkward balance in that game where you need to you do actually need to do a certain amount of side stuff in order to have enough money and enough resources to actually upgrade your ships, your ship for some missions. Like mm. there are some missions you walk you you get to the Oh, it's quite irritating in in a way because you get up to the marker on the map and then it will come, have a little prompt on screen that says you should probably update up, upgrade your ship before doing this mission. Doesn't tell you what, why, or like what you what should probably need to upgrade before you get before you do it. Hmm. Um, which makes me think that that message is a bit nonsense and just like this is a ship based mission. Make sure your ship's in order. Yeah, but it wouldn't, um, say, it wouldn't tell you to upgrade it if you didn't need to upgrade something. It just oh no, there's been missions where I've just gone. Well, where, where I've accidentally rocked up to the thing, seen the message, and I pressed the button to... the B, B is also slow down, but B is the button to start mission when the prompt comes up. So I've been wanting to slow down. It's got to start the mission. It's like, oh, God, well, whatever this is, I'm locked into it now. And uh, and I've been fine. <laughs> and it's worked out just okay. Um, so I think, I think it's a little bit of a nonsense. But yeah, so I, I got to another one of those and so put the time in to try and get the, the wood resource I needed to upgrade my hull to the last step before I need an elite plan to upgrade it. So I'm mostly, uh, mostly helped out on my ship. Um, which is in fairness, the biggest problem I've had is like just survivability has been tricky when I've come up against a particularly nasty fort that I needed to take down and mm. or something like that. It's just like, I'm not quite sure how I can do this. My ship just seems to take way too much damage. How do I, how do I actually do this? Um, and then got lucky on a couple of them. It's been all right. But, um yeah i don't know it's just that there are just I, I, the problem is that I've, I, like the, the all the all the good stuff that i talked about before like you know it, it still exists but it just after this many hours it's just bogged down by all the problems it's like it hasn't really got actually many other tricks up its sleeve it's so it hasn't like opened up in terms of the sailing or well because like, the and... sailing's pretty much always open at all times right okay like you can just go and do that um there are some things locked behind um, story progression things. Like I've just unlocked the ability to get my diving bell out and uh, go go swimming for chests. Um, except there's sharks down there, right? And you have to hide from sharks in bushes <laughs> because this game's about hiding in bushes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Um, or if you're in a shipwreck, <laughs> then, the sh- then, then the sharks can't see you. But it has the same sort of detection mechanic. So, like, it'll go, Boom! and then like, there'll be the little red circle appear on them. And when the red circle fills up, they'll come towards you and attack you. But they'll, like, pretty much eat you immediately when that happens. Like, you you, you, you take damage rather than die immediately. But it's still, like, it's a bit weird. And, it's, and there's also an air mechanic. So you've got to go and do what you need to do within a certain amount of time. Otherwise, you'll, you'll drown. <laughs> without going to like air pockets and stuff like that and like some of them you can only use once and it's like so i don't you, you go down there and you can't really be stealthy with the sharks because there are like the two open areas really and you're swimming in 3d so there's not really many places you can hide and you've got a time mechanic 
and it's swimming, mm -hmm. so the controls are garbage because swimming is always garbage. Right. It's like you've just added something that is terrible. <laughs> this would be this might have been okay with where the sharks not here, just as something to do on the side. But because the sharks are here, this is rubbish. Oh, and then uh, yeah, swimming controls, and then they like I discovered. Oh, sea urchins, right? They hurt. You could just run into them and go, "Ow, that's taken off like sixty percent of my health bar in a single hit." Thanks, sea urchin. Yeah, that that bit's bad. That stuff seems bad. But you need to do that stuff because that's how you find elite. Well, you don't need to, but that's where you get the elite clans for upgrades to your ship. So you have to go do that stuff if you want to get the last upgrades. Um. Ugh, what else have they added? The combat sucks, man. It's just really bad. <laughs> it's just the more the more I play it, the more I just like really hate it. It gets to the points where like some enemies will attack and there won't be the counter symbol above the head. Some people oh. will do that from off screen, which is always a nice oh, nice fun worse. thing for a game to do. Um there are, I've had moments where I've been attacked mid combo by someone else. Um, so, you know, I've already been blocking some or countering someone and someone else has just come in and hit me while I'm while doing that. While you're in the middle of like, countering, yeah. And it's like, yep, nothing I could have done about that. Um, I think the, the, when the, the, the division cones sometimes on the snipery type characters are just unpredictable and massive and just a pain in the ass. And it's, just, I, this game is all around just starting to piss me off. <laughs> like, Sounds it, yeah. But the, the the sort of I, I don't mind the piratiness of it. That's basically the only thing that's keeping me in every now and that's then. That's the good but part even, of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's had some interesting little twists, but there's no, I, I, there's no really real major plot line that you're following. You're following a, a, like a number of little stories. Like chapter five will be chapter four will follow this little subplot. Chapter five will follow this little subplot, and then it will go. But that, that subplot will be different from the last one. It's like when you just want, oh, no, no, carry on with that. There's, there's probably more to that. So there's no real driving right, driving through Plot. line to yeah. keep, keep you going. It's like each chapter feels like you're doing a different thing and not doesn't necessarily work. As, a, as, as I say, there's just very little driving force there. Pirate's life for me, do whatever. <laughs> it's kind of the thing. Yo-ho-ho. -ho. Yeah. There's, a, there's an interesting undercurrent of, hey, all these pirates are getting old and they probably don't want to be pirates anymore, which is starting to become a thing, which is, uh, I don't know, sort of mildly interesting. I guess that was Edward Kenway's thing from the start. He's only, only in it to make enough money so he can settle down and be a normal person. The classic. Yeah. But no, that seems to be basically what all the pirates are. <laughs> it seems like all the captains you meet are a bit like that. Uh, and it's just, which is, it's a little bit interesting. It's an interesting take on it, but I guess they're not they're, they're not really going to do anything with it. It's just like I'm old, I'm out, <laughs> kind of at some point, mm. or oh, I don't think I'll do this much longer, and then someone will die. Probably hasn't happened yet, but I bet that's where it's going. Probably. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just meh. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know if I'll. I wonder if Assassin's I don't know Creed if I can will play ever it and come back to like full on. Full on yeah. goodness. I mean, maybe it will. I mean, they they take a big break right from it because they've not done well yet lately. Big so. relatively speaking. Yeah. Oh yeah, taking it a, a year. Was it last last year they took off? Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, it? well, there wasn't one last year. So, so we and they haven't announced what if they're doing no. anything this year. So maybe they'll take two years off and actually make a good game. Uh, well, you know, not I just a competent game, but a an at, I, like a. Ascreed two style game. If if they're gonna come back to it and <laughs> Which they, they will probably will. Yeah. I it will have to be such a dramatic shake up of systems, I think. Because the these ones yeah. just they don't really work anymore. Mm. Yeah, um, I think it needs to be a do over. Big do you can't just do evolution at this point, I don't think. I'm I'm really not sure if it's just because I expect more from them now, or if they were always kind of messed up and it's just kind of I think there's an element of it always being a bit messed up for sure. Like, yeah, and, and maybe just the settings it, they're putting it in just shows up all those flaws more. I don't know. Mm. Or, yeah, that definitely matters. Like, you can definitely have play areas that make more sense with those mechanics. Yeah, 
like it's just so many things that are a bit rubbishy like you know i did one thing where it was like oh, i'm running past one of these pointless animus fragments let's try and get it and it's like but it was sort of like half out of a tree sort of in in the air and i just couldn't figure out how to get him to mm. jump in the direction of getting it it's like all right if i jump this way i'll get it but then of course it does that snap two thing that it somewhat yeah. does and tries to jump you to a thing and it's like no no that's that's not the direction i want to travel at all and spent ages just trying to get it until i pretty much just accidentally just sort of nudged it with my hair and it's like, oh, right, that'll do. Right, moving on. It's like, I don't, don't quite know how I was supposed to achieve that one properly, but mm. I'll take it. Um, you know, it's just moments like that where the controls are just like, oh, I don't quite know how to do that. It's, it's stealth mechanics seem broken sometimes, like with people just randomly swapping into combat mode after just spotting you. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm fighting you now. And yet that has a weird side effect sometimes of stopping you from being able to actually get in cover. Like, I don't know, there are moments where you're like, if someone's suspicious of you, you'll, you'll, you'll get into a bale of hay and just jump out again immediately. Yeah. And it's like, no, I wanted to hide in there. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah it's like just, the there, intention there's just, there's stuff, just, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some systems I just don't understand and like, or, or the, at least don't, don't seem to, or they're not because the game has evolved past its roots that just don't seem to work in its current setting. I guess it made a bit of sense, right, in the original, where it's just like, yeah, yeah go behind this bit of cloth on a rooftop and you'll be hidden for a bit. Just stay there for a little while. I'll pop down this well. You'll be fine. Um, as long as you were out of, somewhat out of the vision range, uh, when you popped down, you'll be okay. And it's like, it's not strictly true all the time anymore. Like, enemies will come out and investigate. And then, uh, yeah, it, it's just... It's a bit random. You know, I, I find it hard to predict. Yeah. Which oh, oh no. One of the worst things that's happened was combat related. And it's one of the types of ship boarding you can do where it's like, all right. And, and most of the time it's like kill a number of guys or kill the captain or, but there's, and, and then you'll succeed. But then there's, 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 there's one where it's like, oh, now you've got to go. There's two scouts on this boat that are like standing up in the, top of the masts because they mm. can just stand there <laughs> like without the boat wobbling around or anything. She's like, hey, I've got perfect bounce mate. Um, yeah, and it's just like, you've got to go out there and, and kill those dudes as well. But there'll, there'll always be two of them when it asks you to do this and they'll be on different masts and they'll be on a tiny little platform and climbing up there is a glitch fest. <laughs> It's just like, you'll get there, you'll stab a guy, and then it will like throw you, throw you as it happened to me, like, I'll, I'll, I'll stab the guy, and then for some reason I'll glitch off the platform, like just sort of put me to the side, and then I'll fall to the deck of the ship, and then I'll die, and then that whole boarding will have failed. And it's like, great, that, that, that wasn't fair. Or worse, when, you, when, you, when you've climbed the first mast, and it's like, all right, now how do I get to the other one where the guy is and is shooting at me from afar? It's like, how do I actually get there? And the, I think on some of the boats, there just isn't actually a route to get there that's clean. So you try and do a do a jump off the mast to be like, all right, I reckon I can jump down onto that that bit of wood down there, and then I can traverse across here. Da, da, da. You come up, you sort of form the plan in your head and like how you could safely do it. And then of course you try and do it, and the game just drops you into the into the deck of the ship. <laughs> and it's like great. <laughs> bloody hell like what am i supposed to do here unless unless you the game is literally expecting me to very slowly climb down the rigging while this other scout is shooting at me so i need to have enough health to take a few hits and hope that the shot doesn't throw me off the rigging with enough so i fall to the deck of the ship and take too much i i don't know how to do that unless i get up there and just you know put them to sleep with blow dart or something that might work and then very slowly make my way over to him and then kill him <laughs> Like it, it just seems not thought through. Mm. I'll say, and glitchy, and a bit horrible, and yeah. So, what are you gonna do? You're gonna pack it in? I don't know. I yeah, I'm 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 very much thinking about just stopping. Mm. But I, mm, every time I want to just mainline it, I get drawn into doing other things. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like I said, I'm only halfway through. It's saying like, I've got like. 40% sync hmm. or something. So have you played anything else in the meantime? I have. I have been playing a shit ton of Overwatch. Still what? trying to get loot for the um uh, the year of the rooster. It's still happening, is it? Uh, yeah, t tomorrow's the last day. Oh, so by the time this podcast goes up, it will be the last day, so it'll be over. Mm. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I've been loot screwed. Like I've owned quite a lot of loot boxes, and none of them have been any better rarity than a blue, which is like level two. Like white is super common, then you get blues, and then you get purples, then you get golds. And I have got no loot better than a blue, which is none of the skins, none of the cool stuff. I've been screwed. Damn it. It's the first time it's actually probably happened to me during an event that I've been totally loot screwed. And I've been totally trying to get all the stuff and the game's just been like, nah, no. <laughs> and it sucks. Which is the same because I quite enjoy playing that game, but I want the loot. I want my rewards for it. And also, you know, Lemon Pile. Yep. Lemon which pile. has not been too much fun. <laughs> I've also been suffering matchmaking problems recently. I've been actually having matchmaking problems in Rocket League as well, which is oh, really? really annoying. Like, I don't know what it is. I think it seems like there's just some kind of server trouble, maybe? Because, like, it takes fucking forever to get into a casual match for me now. I don't know mm. if that's just, like, some combination of my rank and, like, the times of day that I play or something. I don't know. Maybe. But that sucks. And then, like, well, I guess... This isn't a new thing, but the weird timeout glitch that happens when you're trying to join ranked games keeps happening all the time. What's the timeout glitch? Well, it'll say joining, then it'll say waiting for players, and it'll count down. Yeah. It'll be like five, waiting for five players, waiting for four, and waiting for one. Yeah. And then when it gets to one, it just sits there for ages until it times out. <laughs> and then goes, start again. Yeah, then just starts over. And yeah. I can't tell whether that's... I can't tell whether that game then exists and it looks like I didn't join or whether that just drops everyone. Because you know how sometimes when you're in a ranked game, you'll get in and then one person won't actually manage to join and then the match will just get cancelled. Yeah. I can't tell whether that would be happening for everyone else or whether everyone sees the same thing and it just, like, the server's buggered. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so uh, that sounds a little bit similar to what I've been experiencing with uh, Overwatch, uh, mainly because I'm trying to play the Catch of the Flag game type while it's on. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's just like an underpopulated mode, but um, yeah, it, it seems to, it takes a really long time to find a game and then you get into a game and chances are the lobby it will put you in won't be full. Mm. So you're sat around there for a while waiting for players because Overwatch won't start a game until you have a complete, yeah, completely full set, which makes a bit of sense. But then the game times out if you, if it doesn't fill that lobby fast enough. So there's a good chance you will end up in a lobby only to sit there for a while only to get kicked out of the lobby while it re- while it reboots. Yeah. To then start the process again, to wait a while, to get put in a lobby, to have you kicked out again. And that's happened a few times where I've gone through that loop a few on a few sessions and it's just like, this is taking forever. Yeah. Um uh, worse, that- there seems to be something about that game mode where nobody stays in the bloody room after a match. <laughs> Right, you'd think the most the, surely the easiest way to keep playing games yeah. is to stay in the lobby. But that's the same thing that Rocket League has, isn't it? Where it's just like, why does everyone quit after one? It's yeah. like, even on games where the teams are mostly balanced, everyone just leaves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's been some brilliant. Don't get me wrong, I've had some. I, I, it's not like every match I've had has been crap over the last last couple of weeks. Lemons. Yeah, but at least it's like but, even numbers of lemons or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that works out, right? <laughs> um, but it's. Uh, yeah, it's not like every game that has been that way either. Like even when you've had a real tight game and it's been real fun, like and it's like yeah, it's ended in a draw, which no one seems to like. <laughs> I guess, but yeah, and but but and doesn't earn anyone anything, <laughs> I guess. But at the same time, it's like it's like yeah, that was a real close match. That was actually entertaining. That was fun. That's what I want from this game mode. Like I want it to be close. That's what I want from any game mode. Yeah. Really, you want to have to fight for it. Um, yeah, and it's yeah, and then everyone look, half the half the half the half the player base leaves so you end up back at the start right you end up in that half filled lobby the, the, the game sits there going I'm trying to find some players doesn't yeah. and then just kicks you out which is then why people leave because it's like that's been happening to them so you end up with this awkward cycle of because people leave people leave <laughs> yeah it's like making you, the problem worse you're, you're trying to skip that like extra 30 seconds of waiting by like yeah, starting yeah. to queue again and hoping you just get put straight into a room which is always full or whatever which doesn't help because it will probably join you to the server you just left that's the other rocket and league the, classic yeah. problem <laughs> and then you're in and in that half filled lobby again so like, the number of times I've, I've been playing for like a three hour session or something and it's been kicking me out and putting me back in kicking me out putting me back in the games 
and I've just ended up with the same players I've seen, so, like sometimes days apart, right? I'll just go back into a lobby. It's like, oh, I played against you. Well, at least that and means like, like the ranking I like comes, is working conceptually. I yeah, guess. I, and, <laughs> you're all at the same skill level. In, in, yeah, whatever hidden skill, because <laughs> it's only like a like arcade modes don't have like proper, proper rank, ranks, but yeah. you know, yeah, the, the theory is it has one of those behind the scenes skill ratings um, at play, and the. Uh, yeah, it, like, I guess you would argue it is still trying to skill matches, but perhaps it's trying to match us a little too well and is a little too strict about it, hence why we keep getting crap matches, or yeah. if it doesn't just decide to, oh, I'll just fill this room. Possibly. I did play one game of Rocket, one ranked game of Rocket League on a legitimately laggy server, which was very oh, difficult. Oh man, that, that always sucks. It's like, I, I, I'd seen it a couple of times before in, in like casual like actual rank like actual laggy servers but i hadn't had a ranked game where it happened and it's like oh this is real this is real bad mm. <laughs> but i mean it affects everyone equally in that case because it's actually the server that's lagging so it's like at least it's even <laughs> like it's not just like one of your teammates is really laggy. everyone's as laggy so you all have to try and cope with this weird game where you're like i can't i can barely hit a ball and then sometimes when i hit a ball that turns out i didn't hit a ball because because <laughs> the lag catches oh, up wow. yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't checked. Oh yeah, the other thing I want to mention: I haven't checked the uh, patch notes recently, but <laughs> I think they've changed Roadhog's chain to be even longer because it like the range seems absurd sometimes now, and it's yeah, that that thing is possibly the most annoying mechanic in the game. Like it, anyway, it, it would be it's... fine if it was longer, but you had to be more accurate, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't seen right. so many through the wall hits like it used to do hmm. um but it has caught me out a couple of times where you know it does the court you know it has a kill cam right so you watch it back and go right just where was he aiming when he threw that and it was miles off and it looks like i've pinged back into position when it's supposedly caught me right to like to like i don't know that must be a lag conversation thing but sometimes it's been so extreme and you're just like oh come on uh, yeah i from his view i didn't pass through a wall but I was way beyond the wall and it put me back in front of the wall in order to compensate for it. So it's like, well, screw you anyway. Mm. Uh, yeah, I hate Roadhog's chain. Which is like, I hate it. What is the, like, what is the kill cam? Ba- like, the kill cam must be based on the server's view of things, but then so it's giving priority to know. the player's view in I that case. I, yeah, I don't even know. It might even just be showing what my computer thought happened. Like, I guess. It's really, it's really hard to tell, but yeah, that that chain is still messed up. <laughs> and I have like a nineteen millisecond ping yeah. on Overwatch most of the time. Like it seems fairly, it seems really consistently that number as well, like nineteen. <laughs> but that's just because that's like a, when once pings get to a certain lowness, it's like you they don't vary as much, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I can only assume it's other people's pings as always, but yeah. Yep, as always. Get some fat pipes. Yep, fat. Still love that game, but I think I'm a bit burnt out on it because I've been playing it a lot recently. <laughs> yeah. So might might need to take an Overwatch break, um, which is fine because there'll be no event on in a day. So, <laughs> yes, so, you yeah. have a reason to play it. Yeah. Uh, that's what else I've been doing. I finished Thumper. Yep. Uh, I finished the the main campaign of that. Did did level nine. Thump, um, thump. Uh, still, still a lot of fun. I still think playing on the fight stick is the way to go. I don't, this, you know, the digital feel to the fight stick is super helpful. I think, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I find it way easier playing with that. And uh, yeah, got into the zone, sort of put. I did it properly, like, got uh, well, uh, doing it properly would be play it on pit on on VR, right? But, <laughs> um, but, but I did it as much as I could, like, put some noise cancelling headphones on, like, just just went just went right into the zone and played it for like a good couple of hours in a row and just to get through it and it was that's how you do that game you have to get into a you really have to get into a zone to do it and it gets weird at the end (laughs) they throw in some extra mechanics after the final boss which it labels as final boss and then there's more and it's uh and yeah some weird stuff goes down there which i think is actually not good (laughs) from like as a rhythm game but as a sort of end of the game, it's fine. But if you're trying to play it for like actually trying to be good and time things and like it, yeah, it's it's weird. I'll, I'll, I won't spoil it, but it's it's this it's some bizarre stuff happens at the end of that. It's like the ending of Dyad. 
Oh god, yeah. <laughs> that, that last whole level. Ugh. That was weird. I sort of scrubbed a dyad from my memory, I think. <laughs> I should probably go play some more dyad. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, see if I can actually see what's going on in that game now. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, my, my thoughts on Thumper still sort of remain the same. I think that game is overly harsh when you get hurt because the red flare and the screen wobble that happens when you get it just makes it so you can't see what's coming up next. Mm. So, so when you take that one bit of damage, you're allowed. The next bit of damage is almost inevitable. <laughs> um, and, and on, especially on the harder stages. But it's amazing. Like It's one of those games where it's amazing that when you go back to an earlier level, like so, I went and started playing level five, trying to do an S rank run. Hmm. Um, which, yeah, as I mentioned before, the game's really generous about. It. You just have to S rank a section, um, and then carry on. And if you mess up the next section, you can just restart that section. It will keep all your S ranks from before, and that's still that's still allowed. You just have to S rank every session, yeah, every section in turn <laughs> to get a uh, level S rank. That's that's okay. Um, but yeah, I went from nine back down to five, and it's like. Oh man, this is easy. <laughs> it's like uh, I remember level five being a real pain in the jacksie when I did it the first time, and it's uh, oh yeah, this is all right. <laughs> so yeah, you do you do naturally get better at that game as you go through. Um, but I uh, I, I kind of have to agree with my, what most people don't like about that game, which was I really wish there was more musicality to it. Like by the end of it, you just realise like the, yeah, they mix up the time signatures, but the sound of each stage is identical pretty much like you know you as you go through it you'll be like all right these are the the more traditional like large timpani drum section and then there'll be one that has a sort of like a a, a bass note to it that's browning and it browning and it browning but that same bass note is used whatever text whatever time signature level you're in but it will always appear at sort of like three quarters of the way through and stuff like that i, I just kind of wish they did more with its audio landscape mm-hmm. than they do I need something to draw me in. I need a hook rather than the, you know, I need a fat beat. <laughs> you know? Fat pipe, fat beat. <laughs> yeah. There's, 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 there's not a lot there. I mean, yeah, the, the physicality of it is what, is what keeps you in once you, once you get started. But if I, if I step away from it, coming back to it is difficult because there's nothing to, there's nothing for my ears to look forward to particularly. <laughs> It's not like going into it and going, I'm just going to have another run on Killer Queen or yeah, or, or whatever the rock band song du jour is. Although alternatively, um, that became like, that was one of my problems with like Spectra, that weird, not audio surf. Oh, thing yeah. Because that had good music because it was like by the Super Hexagon guy or whatever. Mm. But the trouble was that like some of those tracks were better than others, so those were the only ones I wanted to play. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it was like, I don't want to replay these other levels because I don't like that song as much. Well, I guess this gets around that, yeah, because they're all the same. <laughs> but, but that's not to say, like, like uh, I don't know, some of, some of the the more normal time signatures, like six and eight, I suppose, there are sections where it does sort of make a beat for a while. Because it can. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you'll, you'll have like, you have like thump, turn, thump, turn, thump, turn. <laughs> it'll make a little drum and bass section. But then it'll just come out of that, right? Like the whole thing isn't really a, a sequence song. designed to make music, really. It's just a sequence of, per- of percussion to be hard. And boy, do some of those sequences get difficult. Um, it's a cool game, and I would like to experience it in VR at some point, but um, I'm halfway through doing an S-rank run on level 5, and I don't think I'll ever play it again. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I beat you, crackhead. It's a cool game, though. You should play it. Um, and I very briefly today... Started playing Joe Danger too. Okay. Joe Danger. Lol. What's well, it like? it's because I had it had it installed in my system, thinking we might do an ironic Hello Game <laughs> video. Of course. Um, <laughs> but it got to the point where it's like, yeah, okay, that moment has passed now. Let's just play this, and uh, yeah, that's okay. It's an all right game. Um, I'm trying to think what, like, okay, so it's sort of trials like, sort of, except without the physics y bit. So it's a little bit more like. Um, Isn't that the whole uh, point of trials? Well, kinda, yeah. 
So, so, it's, but it's it's very dumbed down in that respect. Like, so you'll be put on a course, and uh, you know, some of it will be like fixed speed. So, you're like, you like you you're just barreling down it, and you you like a rhythm game, I suppose. Have to just input to to avoid things, but you have some level of boost control, and there's some level of physics where you can, if you jump and then angle yourself and then boost, you can adjust your trajectory in the air using your boost and. Th- you can air break in most of the levels, um, and st- and stuff like that. It's a, it's a little bit of a simplified version, and almost a sort of get the stars version of, of of trials, where trials is all about time. This has got like sort of optional objectives per level, where the time isn't actually that important on most of them. It's just, uh, yeah, can you get all the stars? Can get you the stars, the, right? Get the special one. Can you spell danger? Um, <laughs> Can you spell horse or whatever it was in Tony? What was it in Tony Hawk's? Oh, yeah, always had yeah, horse. Yeah, horse. I don't know, but in in the levels, wasn't it something else you had to spell? Like skate. Skate, yeah, that's it. Yeah, spell danger instead of skate. Even the font looks a little bit like skate. But yeah. <laughs> All those collectible letters look generically the same in most games. Yeah, just sort of slightly italicized <laughs> in capital, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of those. It's a little bit obnoxious with its... Uh, sound design because you have a director shouting instructions at you like oh, so like duck now jump escape <laughs> and the, yeah that, that, it's, it's I don't think you could play it for long sessions because it gets a little irritating right but um, but I'm over a, over a quarter of the way through that game apparently already in like an hour so might be a nice quick one to finish provided <laughs> it doesn't get too difficult <laughs> get Joe Danger out of the way Joe Danger, Joe Danger Two, yeah. the movie, Electric Boogaloo. Well, not, uh, yeah, the most annoying thing it does so far is that when when you get to the end of a stage, and it, uh, or you get the uh, end of an act, sorry, like a, a group of stages, uh, you'll get like a highlight reel, but that highlight reel isn't of what you did. I don't what? think it's just sort of a video of the stages you just sort you of played when it. things happen. I, I don't really know, and it's unskippable, and it's like I, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> That does sound dumb. Yeah. I don't think it's of stuff I did anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, I don't like my memory of it. It's like, just, it's just like when I'm watching it, it's just like, that doesn't look like me. Well, is it an engine or is it like clearly videoed? Mm, yeah, it, it looks like it might be a video. Mm-hmm. I, I doubt it was capturing. That's, what, that's all I mean. Yeah. Like, for a game like that, I doubt it was capturing the whole time, yeah. and then decided to take. Oh, here's you dying on a jetpack or something. Yeah, that's the weird thing. There were certain levels where there was a bit of a stealth level, well, almost a stealth level, like where it's just like had uh, one of the one of the uh, the uh, objectives was don't set the off the alarm, which basically meant oh these these um, these obstacles aren't going to hurt you, but if you go through them, then a big alarm goes off and stuff starts shooting at you. And it's like oh right. Um, so there were bits where you had to wait. You had to stop and wait for the or barrier. If you mucked it up, like, I'm just going to wait for this barrier to get out of the way. All right, yeah, now right. let's carry on again. So it's a little weird. There's, there's a little weird stuff. Possibly the best thing about the game is just when you load it up, I think it says hello in different voices each time. Oh. Uh, like, does No Man's Sky do that? <laughs> no Man's Sky doesn't have anything on mm. <laughs> starting, I guess. At least I don't remember if it did. I did remember what, was... what I did remember what the third game I played actually was. What's that? I forgot, but I played quite a lot more of Enter the Gungeon. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, we finished a run. Well, yeah, we finished yeah. a run in co-op, which was good, I guess. Mm. Kind of, kind of proved that there wasn't a co-op achievement exactly. Yeah, <laughs> not really. But yeah, I played quite a lot of that. I I killed all the four characters' pasts. Yay. And, and like, <laughs> the, the obvious spoiler of, like, it turns out there is a sixth chamber to this obviously gun-themed game. <laughs> what a surprise. Oh, of course. Right, yeah. <laughs> and guess what it is? A gun? No. <laughs> Unsur- Russian? Unsurprisingly, it's bullet hell. Because uh, <laughs> obviously it would be. <laughs> right. Good, good, good job, Gungeon. 
but I haven't managed to beat the boss at the end of the actual, actual boss, I guess. I haven't okay. managed to beat the last boss. I've only got to it once. So do you have to kill your past to get to the bullet hell? When no. You... It's like when you're going up that walkway up to the gun, there's just like, well, the first time it happens, like a, just a big skeleton hand comes out of the ground and pulls you into bullet hell. But then every other time, it's just like, there's just a hole that you can choose to go down or you can walk past it to go to the oh, killing the past. So, so, you, so you can finish it there if you want. Why yeah. would you do that? Well, so, you, you wouldn't. Yeah, Apart from I did, unless you want to see the ending again. Well, yes. Yeah. Apart from I did get to that, I did do. The, I got one of the new characters unlocked, and when I went, when I got to his ending, it turned out that the, the hole was still there. Hmm. So then I had to walk around it to go and do the killing the past. Oh, ending. I see. Right. Oh, okay. So, so they've done that for DLC purposes. Yeah, I guess. So yeah, I went down to that boss and died it was it was annoying because like i guess i had a lot of health or at least it seemed like it considering how many hits i took <laughs> but like i got down there i didn't particularly have any great guns i guess which is probably the reason why i failed but like i like shot the dude a bunch of his health bar went down and it's like oh wait here comes stage two obviously of course because you know it's about to happen and then you transitioned into stage two, and I shot that guy, but got his health bar, and it's like, I was like, oh shit, the stage three, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and then when I got to stage three, I only had one hit left and died on the first thing it shot. And it's like, well, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Pew. Gonna have to learn, learn that boss on a few more runs, I guess. And yeah, the new, new character uh, that I unlocked. <laughs> it was, it's just one of the bullets. You get to play as a bullet. Oh, nice. With a cape. <laughs> Super bullet. But the funny thing about that is, like, he's a bullet, and his starting weapon is a sword. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and of course, the sword is called blasphemy because it's like it's not a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, I like this game. Although, like, when you're at full health, it has like a sword beam, like Zelda, because it's it, the whole thing is a Zelda reference for that for that dude. Mm. So you basically you have to try and stay at full health to use the sword beam until you get an actual gun, <laughs> right? And even then you're like, you better not run out of ammo because otherwise you're back to the sword. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's pretty good. But on the plus side, the sword does destroy bullets. So if you time your swipes, you can get bullets out of the way and hit enemies mm. or what, or, yeah, as you need to. So that's kind of nice. And the, the other funny thing about it is his dodge roll. It's like it makes a little gun firing noise because he like fires himself, and then his, his <laughs> passive bonus is like you do damage on your dodge rolls because you're literally a bullet. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it is it's pretty, pretty good. good. <laughs> and this is all in the free supply drop update. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even seen any hint of how to unlock the the other secret character. Hmm. Like I, the, hint, the bullet was kind of obvious. Well, sort of. Like, you just see him occasionally and you have to not kill him. Oh, yeah, you told me about that, I think. But, like, I didn't know exactly what you had to do at that point, but it turns out you just have to... You just have to have that happen on every floor of the regular gungeon. Like, mm. all five floors, you have to see him and let him escape. In what, in one run? No, just over time. Oh, right, okay. But he's randomly spawning, so mm. you don't know... You don't always see him. No. So, yeah, got that. And did, uh, actually, uh, like, it only took two runs and get to his pass and do that. Which is, unsurprisingly, even more of a Zelda reference. <laughs> like, you know, literally the start of Link to the Past. Or, literally the start and end of Link to the Past. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> well, that is pretty funny. Like, when you're doing the Link to the Past bit where you find the dead uncle or whatever, and it's just another an old-looking bullet dude. <laughs> of course. But he, the sword is stuck in his head, and he's like, "I don't know how to use this this ancestral weapon when I when I try and aim and shoot, it just stabs me in the head." <laughs> <laughs> it's like bullets literally don't know how to use swords. <laughs> it's pretty good. So yeah, there's still more to do in that, I guess. If I can work, even to have any idea how to unlock this last character and finish bullet hell. <laughs> Enter the gungeon. Yep. I haven't found any particularly interesting new guns recently, I guess. There was a gun that, like, 
could have potentially been ridiculously powerful. I, I guess it wasn't like was it a gun? It might have been a passive item, but where it was like the more no, it was a passive. It's like the more g- different guns you have, the the they it just gives a bonus to whatever gun you're using. So like the more guns you have, the more powerful your guns are, hmm. which was quite nice. Yeah, and then like you know, combine that with duct tape, and you can make <laughs> you make yeah. some hell of shit. Yeah, I haven't re- really found any more interesting like Uda combos, mm. particularly. Or oh, any more mysterious Uda secrets? Or... No. The, yeah, because now that I've now that I've discovered those first two secret chambers, and I'm like most of the time I ha- haven't really been through the second of the secret chambers that often any longer because I keep dying to the boss. Mm. <laughs> it's like that that one specific boss gives me a lot of trouble. And there's still that goddamn one specific boss on chain before that every time I see it, it just completely fucks me. Mm. Those goddamn stone pillars. They just have a really awkward, like... Didn't we, did we beat those? In no, the, no. The, 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 the... Well, look at the bullet pillars. Yeah, right? yeah. kill pillars. Kill pillars. I think we just died immediately. Because that was the first time we'd seen them. Mm. I'd seen them, like, a couple of times before. But it's like... I don't necessarily have too much of a problem with, like, the death circle and the, like, dodging that. Sort of, except, like, it's really easy to dodge into the enemies because you're, you're dodging a ring that's coming outwards, but you have a very limited amount of space to do it in. Mm. And you're trying to move sideways at the same time because of the rotation. And then, like, if you dodge too far forward, you just hit the things in the middle and you take damage from that instead. Mm. But then, like, their other patterns are annoying as well. The main one, like main ones that I have trouble with, is because they they like jump, they like stomp around and fire bullets out when they hit the ground and stuff. But there's they transition between like jumping around in the middle of the room in a group, and then they move out to one side of the room and go across. Right. And I'm almost always getting caught by that transition where they're moving from the center of the room to the edge, and I'm just there, and it's like and I so, can't work oh, out no, where the right. fuck I need to be to not get hit on that on the on the way past. Mm. Dr. under them? Yeah, I guess. It's kind of awkward. So I... Every time I see them, I just die. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. You might as well just be like, ah, oh, bleh. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then, I, so then I've been thinking about, like, there's that achievement for getting the master round, every master round for the first five chambers. Because I did finally get the master round for the fifth one, the dragon. Finally got oh, that. Oh, wow. Okay. Got through yeah. that without being hit. Mm. But then I was thinking about, like, if you're going to try and get that achievement, do you just reset as soon as you see that boss? Because <laughs> getting through it without getting hit, getting through it alive is a problem enough. Mm. It's just like, you see, you get there and you see that it's that one, you're just like, well, fuck it, <laughs> just restart. Mm. I guess it depends what guns you have. Because at a certain point, if you have it, it's four chambers in, so you could potentially have got some pretty powerful shit by then. If you had the right combos or whatever, if you just eat through them quick enough, routes, I guess as well. Yeah, up to six chambers. Mm. I think the most powerful gun that I've seen recently has been the Gungeon, as in a gun engine. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> Gungeon. Yep, Gungeon, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Mm. It just fires a shit ton of bullets very quickly. You just dump, mm-hmm. and it has a hell of a long clip, <laughs> and it makes you move faster. Okay, that seems a bit powerful. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, maybe it doesn't have the highest damage output ever, but you just you're just holding down the trigger and it's just firing a million bullets. So it's <laughs> pretty good for just like not having to pay attention to so much to like your aim or anything or reload. <laughs> and it does claim that it has like a secondary ability where like reloading converts start like goop on the floor into ammo, but I. I haven't actually, I can't work out how that's meant to work. Cause like, if you fire, like, if you fire off one bullet in the clip and then reload while you're over some goop, you get like one bullet bag. And I'm like, and then, and then you don't seem to be able to get more. But if you just press reload without firing, it doesn't reload, but it still scoops up goop off the floor and you don't get anything. And I'm like, how is this ability actually meant to function? <laughs> mm, weird. This is going to sound really stupid, but I was just watching the clock on the wall. Okay. And uh, 
my eyes didn't correctly see what happened when, or at least I don't, I don't think my eyes correctly saw what happened. Like, because as I looked up, it, it was the moment where the second hand crossed to 12 and the minute hand moved. And for a moment, because, you know, most of the time you look at clock, you don't see that happen, right? <laughs> it's like exactly one sixtieth of the time. Yeah. So, I don't know, I looked up, saw the other hand move, and for some reason, at that precise moment, my mind suddenly had a sort of, like, little spasm, which is, like, like uh, just mildly blown. And it's like, and the thing is, I've just watched it go round a couple more times, and that doesn't even happen. It's one of those minute hands that sort of moves... Well, casually like it doesn't like just chunk at the end of a minute and it's like my eyes have just like miss miss seen that happen and then caused a little bit of a <laughs> in my own brain i think that probably means it's getting close to the end of this podcast but we need to talk to dad about what he's been playing probably. <laughs> uh i have not been playing very much uh what have i done um oh i played some sonic generations for some reason what <laughs> good uh, we, we, yeah. Talk to me about Sonic Generations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 all we need. I need to hear this. I don't know. It's a game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A word. You, you it's the it. game. I mean, um, I realised that I could uh, um, that when I'd played it before, like like um, the two D one, especially you know the mm, old style Sonic. Classic mode. Like um, it looks cool, but it's like my screen is too big basically and i was playing it like i was playing an fps or something and like i just can't really see what's going on in it uh because oh, like, right. you're, you're to too close mode, i guess so so i realized that if i just like lean way back i could actually vaguely <laughs> play it <laughs> i mean the other the 3d one it's like it's more traditional or whatever so so when yeah, when yeah. it's like the when it's like third person and you're behind sonic it's totally fine because everything around the peripheries is like immersive periphery stuff that doesn't matter whereas in the or two, blur. <laughs> yeah exactly or blur whereas in the 2d one way you kind of need to play it like the original games which you used to play on a small tv and like mm. it didn't have the depth of field and you could clearly see what things were i'm like well i need to like lean way back and sort of squint and then i can actually play this <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yeah so that was fine but i um i'm still like I'm still more of a deliberate Mario person than a Sonic speed freak, uh, at least for, in the 2D worlds. Yeah, at least, uh, well, at least the 2D one sort of doesn't. You, right, is there any reason to to go fast? Does the Sonic one force you? Well, it's fast? a lot of stopping and starting. It's like you yeah. could go slow through the whole thing, but it seems to be like go fast and then sort of stop and do some. And then deal with deal with the situation. I suppose unless you're yeah. going for like the red coin stuff, where you might want to be deliberate. Yeah, you places, might want to try and fight them or. Yeah, uh, and I guess there's only the um, the city escape level that forces you to be fast, otherwise you die. Right, but like the deliberate slow yeah. stuff when you're in those situations doesn't feel amazing. No, like so, like it's not quite know. right, is it? In terms of Sonic physics, it's like it's but like really even close, but it's it's not quite the right. Yeah, but Sonic was never for that. Right? That's the, the thing. Acceler- Sonic the acceleration was never for that. always yeah. So. Acceleration always took a while to get up to that pace. So that's and, just me. Yeah. Like you guys are Sonic fans, so that's all cool. Yeah. But. But anyway, Speaking I'm, of I'm, I'm pretty Sonic. hyped for Sonic Mania. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I'm yeah. pretty hyped. Yeah. Speaking of Sonic, I remembered one other thing that I can just very briefly mention on this podcast about video games. Oh, about video games in general? No, about Sonic. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, like, uh, my mum brought home a whole bunch of uh, old DSs from the charity shop mm. <laughs> with uh, some games, and one of the games there was Sonic Colors on DS. Ooh. And I hadn't actually seen that before, so I was like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'll just shove that in for a second and see what that's about. Interesting, yeah. And it turns out what it is is basically it's it's basically Sonic Rush. Mm. Like, it's that style of Sonic game, unsurprisingly, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But the problem with it is that they removed the trick system. So you no longer right. do air tricks and you no longer have the directional tricks at the end of your jump or anything. But Sonic Colors had the trick system in the Air Wii version, right? It had a trick system on well, certain jumps. Yeah, but well, that's different. That's like weird, like rainbow rings in generation and it, stuff. Where yeah. it like just toggles you into trick mode or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, so the DS version of Sonic Colors doesn't have the Rush style tricks, which I found completely confusing because it was like, why can't I? I need to change my direction at the end of this ramp, but I can't. <laughs> I can't oh, oh, I come off the... a spring and then like divert sideways or it's, anything. It's, it's not even just the mash tricks. You mean it's actually you mean the direction? Yeah, all tricks. of it. It's right. Because I guess it's just like. I guess they use that button for the wisps, I suppose. <laughs> so they didn't have an available button to have you constantly spam. 
and it seemed weird. I was like, this is strange. And then I didn't really see any. I only played like two levels. I only saw like one of the Wisp Towers. Mm. And it was like, well, yeah, I guess that game was probably fine, but it's another one of those weird, like, kind of like the generations on the on 3DS, where it's just like, it's clearly not as good as the actual game. Right. It's just the vague representation of it in a fairly competent way. Just. And it, it sounds weird to say, but the the the, the B Sonic team, right? yeah, if such a thing exists, <laughs> it was kind of the opposite of Sonic Boom. When I when I tried the demo of Alpha, yes, yes, right? like this is clearly a better game than the console. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. it's because it's a completely different game, isn't yep. it? Yeah, yeah, yep. Is that Sonic? Where that was a bit of that. Uh, played a bit of FTL this afternoon, which was going fine. I'd forgotten. Like, um, that I could upgrade my <laughs> ship, like, while I went along. But for some reason, I thought I had to be in a store to do that. And I was like, oh, no, I can use this. But, oh, I should have probably upgraded my reactor a bit I earlier can, than this. Yeah, I can just, yeah. just do my systems while I've got scrap. Yeah, exactly. So that was a bit dumb. But anyway, that was fine. But then um, I lost my captain to a random event. And I was like, oh, great. You just, that guy is gone. It was like, oh, great. Well. I probably shouldn't have clicked on that thing, I suppose, but yeah, I just have no to remember way. that no. for next time. Yeah. yeah. Just, hey, you so have what, to build up, uh, you have to remember what all the stupid random events are so that you don't... But then fall. but then some of them even have random outcomes, don't they? Well, sure. so, I mean, yeah. like, you probably, even if you had picked that same option, you might not have lost the guy and got something for it. You got yeah. something for it, I suppose. But, I, I, but there's what, no like, way of weighing the risk. Are, like, it doesn't there, tell there are you some like, that what are the bad, dice roll like, is. Yeah, there are, there are, I'm sure, that, I can't remember what they are, but I'm sure there are some events where are just, like, mostly bad most of the time. So there are spiders. <laughs> well, yeah, there's the space. Well, that's one, obvious, though, I, isn't it? I don't know. I definitely, I definitely remember seeing the positive outcome of that sometimes. Yeah, but it's rare. Well, I wish it would tell you it? what like, the dice like, roll I guess was. You don't know. That would that would be. I mean, I don't know if that would be less fun. I mean, I bet, but... I bet the space fighter one has got to have a like a subtle adjustment to the probability based on like your cruise hand to hand combat, right? Your overalls like cruise hand to hand combat across all of them averaged out or something. Yeah, maybe. I guess that was the interesting thing about Hand of Fate, sorry, talking about your dice roll thing, is that you didn't get to see it before you entered into the decision making process, but during the but the way it did dice rolls was to show you four cards mm. and those four cards had the outcomes on them. Yeah. Like ranging from very good to good to bad or very bad. And it's like you could at least see the probability of the layout of this particular choice um, as you were going into it. It's like you, 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 you're screwed because it's like, oh, I'm already making the choice to some degree. <laughs> but at least you could remember it's like, okay, that particular combination of events is, is going to lead me to a very difficult dice roll. Yeah. And that dice roll condition was always the same for that for that particular condition. So you could, you could at least... Uh, plan out a little bit if you came up against that one it's like oh, all right okay this one this i've got a very rare chance of succeeding here i mean um it's quite you, theoretically that's the same thing you do in in fdl it's just that you don't you don't miss you don't have a more you don't have a like an actual obvious view of the probabilities no you no. just you just weight it based on your previous experiences and like which well, may be dramatically skewed from the reality is it? well and you also weight it based on like if you've seen the bad outcome, then that gives you more. Like any event where you could lose a crew member, if yeah, that yeah, happens yeah. to you, you're just like, okay, I know that's the event where I can use, lose a crew member. That's one of the worst things that could possibly happen. So I'm yeah, never ever going really to pick bad. that event again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of how what the actual probability of success is, the chance that you could lose a crew member basically outweighs it every time. It's because I was coming back from a long time and I've forgotten everything, and you basically need a list of the things where you could lose a crew member in yeah. your mind in order to play it. It's kind of where, why I've never gone back to it because it's just like I don't. I, well, there's two reasons I've never gone back to it. Yeah, one one is yeah, that the, the knowledge loss. <laughs> That's dumb. And um, and and the other one is I actually find it way more fun to play with someone. <laughs> like when Zach and right, I were doing yeah. the video stuff, that was that was a lot more fun than me trying to figure it out on my own. To be honest, I was watching a bit of that and today actually before I started playing. 
Exactly. And Zach was kind of half telling you what to do in some of those yeah, things. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I, know exactly, the knowledge. I know exactly yeah. what he was doing because it's just like <laughs> I, I, I had played it for a few hours and basically sort of hit my wall with it. Yeah, yeah. And, cut and kind of needed someone else to drive yeah, totally. me through it. But but I yeah. kind of appreciated that. It no, was, I get that. It was still it fun to do. Yeah, yeah. In a pair. I, I can totally see that. And it's I, I, like, have a, I have a ceiling, I think, with that style of game where it's just like, there's, okay, there's too much bullshit going on here. Well, it's because and you it's, have to invest time into just into learning those things. It's a bit of a problem, like especially when you've got... Because uh, I'd gotten to the last boss a couple... The second phase of the last boss a few times on my own. Yeah. And had been like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. And because it takes so long to get to that point, yeah. it's just like, I can't be asked to spend the so long to get to that point just to come up against it and get annihilated immediately again it's just like uh, my my tolerance just fell well i mean I, theoretically... i've forgotten my tactics for the final boss as well so i'd have to rethink what to do once i got there because i'm I mean, sure theoretically... i had a special tactic but i can't remember what it was <laughs> there's several mm. you could use. i think i used to use the one of buy a a, a teleport at the, at the last moment and then and then teleport into their weapons base, which aren't connected yeah. to anything else. And oh, yeah, yeah. Zach had that plan. Didn't he? I mean, that can, that, yeah, that can work. I think. Did we do that on the? I don't even remember. Yeah, but the thing about it is, like, theoretically, with that last boss, it takes a long time to get there. But whilst you're trying to get there repeatedly to learn it, you theoretically should be getting much better at everything before that as well. Well, yeah. Like you'll be seeing more of the events and you'll be learning more of the catalogue sure. of things that can happen and yeah, yeah. how best to exploit the systems. You should you should come up with a better ship by the end of it. Which should make that last bit easier, theoretically. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like you, it's just a matter of you have to spend a certain significant amount of time to learn all those things. Because we didn't succeed even on our second run, did we? I don't think so. Yeah. Spoilers yeah. for our own videos, but yeah, I don't <laughs> our think, own ancient videos. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we succeeded. Yeah, check that out on our happy on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Happy salad. It's a fun couple of parts. Well, yeah. a fun triplet of parts, but the second two are better recorded. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> way better. <laughs> and yeah, I haven't played any more in uh, Homeworld or anything. I maybe I did a bit. I can't remember. I think it was like a. a sort of boneyard type thing where you had to just go to the end of the map and dock with a it just had a lot of automatic turrets and stuff it wasn't a very exciting mission it was that oh, right, okay. but anyway i think the next one is a big fight so i've been a bit apprehensive of that so mm. we'll see how that it's goes just sort of like survive survive through this level as much as you can to kind make of. the next level a bit better yeah yeah to get right but i'm not sure how to get ready for the next level which seems mm. to be the main thing so oh, but i've got a decent fleet at this point so hopefully it'll be okay uh yeah, and that's it. The the only other news is I pre-ordered a switch. So, oh, have you? Yeah, interesting. Sod it. Let's do it. You I pre-ordered a... it from somewhere where you're likely to get it on launch. <laughs> <laughs> well, they sent me an email saying originally they said it will be like five days after launch, and then they sent me an email saying congratulations, oh, no, good actually, news, we'll be all right. it's going to be on yeah. launch. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, okay. That's uh, cool. So we'll see if that holds, but I don't really buy wait a couple of days necessarily. But yeah, mm. I think it is a Friday, so it's just before the weekend. So it'd be good to get it. Um, <laughs> That's but... always the worst way. You make a make a plan of getting something on a Friday for the weekend, and then that doesn't happen. Which yeah. is super yeah. pissed. Which is yeah, almost all the time. Every yeah. time I've tried that. Yeah, I'm not going to be that annoyed. I don't think. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I've also got various. What have I got? I've got some kind of <laughs> switching box thing that I haven't obviously haven't tried it yet that should allow me to extract the audio from the HDMI into optical Toslink or coax digital. Ah, nice. So you can so feed can, that into your amp and I can feed that into my preamp thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and uh and it also has switching of HDMI, so if I then get a PS4 to play Red Dead yeah, 2 cool or idea. whatever, I can switch them around without yeah. dicking about. Well, presumably can... when you use the switch, when you switch that around, you'll get <laughs> yeah. your HDMI pass through as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's He's what I mean. making the switch. So it's for the switch. So, uh, yeah. So, um, And I only ordered Zelda, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm probably... 
I'll probably get Mario Kart because I never had a Wii U, so I'll probably get that eventually. I I gotta be honest. It's like I know I own Mario Kart Eight, but there's stuff about the was it the the double dashiness of this version of the deluxe version that that is real appealing. Like you know the double power up system, or there's there's nothing really wrong. Like uh, in a bit, a bit of me hopes that's optional. Like so you can like have double power ups turned on or not, but like. I don't know. There's something like the, the fact that they're acknowledging double dash in any way is kind of yeah, nice. but they're not acknowledging it in the way of actually making it double dash. Or well, yeah, not in the, not in the. Well, I suppose it already has its complexity in terms of your cart loadout stuff. Yeah, I guess. But like, I don't think you want they want to necessarily muddy the water by having it so there are carts with two people on them and the balance of the two players is actually important to how the thing handles. And well, it'd be fine if that was just like another option, and then they all were always like that. Like if you had a. It would be just double dash mode. It would you wouldn't be able to have non double dash and double dash carts together. Oh, I guess if it was yeah. just like a f- another like the fourth option on your vehicle setup. Yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah, <laughs> like or or not even your vehicle, right? It'd be like well, no, it'd talk like, it on, but then the the, the your secondary character would be like the fourth option. Essentially. Yeah, <laughs> but you'd have to do it. Yeah, every player would have to, or you know, it would be the option you'd go into a double dash tournament or something rather than yeah, yeah. That would be cool. That would be even better. Still kind of relevant though, because how much difference did it even make in Double Dash really? Because <laughs> ninety percent of the time you're using two characters who are almost the same, because that was just the way, the logical way to make that work. I just want to be able to make it a green shell fight on Baby Park for like a million laps. <laughs> That's what I want, basically. Uh, yeah, no, it's a good game. It's 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 the probably the best Mario Kart for a while. Yeah, I I played <laughs> it, it and it I mean, it's cool. I mean it's better than the Wii one. It's better than the sure. Well, actually, if I say for a while, well, it's like, been like if we're talking the one per console cycle, the Wii <laughs> one's a good one, I suppose. Yeah, like, the Wii one wasn't really that bad. No, it, it wasn't terrible, only, and, and it only... had a good online component, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, whereas the Wii U version's just that, but better and less me focused, well, and, less, and <laughs> yeah. less motion controls. And um, yeah, yeah, true. Less focused on the Wii wheel. Uh, speaking of which, you can get little plastic wheels for the for the joy. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> just hilarious. Ha- they made more wee wheels. Oh well, wee wheels. I mean, at least you can stupidly play it split screen. You know, with just one console. You know, by by taking out the joy cons and propping up the the console with its yeah. stand and all that stuff. You can see the tiniest screen ever. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be hilarious. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, no, cool. I will, uh, I will yeah. Re- be reporting on Nintendo again after an, a gap of, I don't know, long, long, long years. <laughs> probably since before this podcast began. Yeah, yeah probably. Been. Yeah. So that'll be good. Looking forward to a bit of Zelda action. Hmm. Yep. I gotta admit, even even for me, the you know, as a sort of not that much of a Zelda fan type person. The new Zelda looking more more and more good. Well, that's because for you, it's basically like Twilight Princess, which was the one that you played and liked. <laughs> I, I guess it's a bit more like that, I suppose, than the others. But it, like, it's just the open worldiness of it seems smart rather than. I just predict there will be some backlash game. to it when it comes out, but I oh, think yeah, of course. it will be. I think it will be people being stupid. Because there's got to be some major structural changes to it, right, to make it so it's. But yeah. whereas Zelda is relatively. And the, your your critical path is normally quite well known. Well, I mean, the only in, in Zelda, the where, logical way that it should work would be the same way as the 3DS one worked, where they've made it so that you can do the dungeons in it in any order by making it so you can get abilities yeah, in some yeah. way that make them that doesn't necessarily require you to have things unlocking other things. Yeah, yeah, probably probably would be. Whether we they shall see that or not, would be a different matter. Mm. Because you know they have, well, I don't think they they well, still they still haven't even shown anything that actually looks like a dungeon in that game yet. Have they? No, and I think that they're being very careful about that. Um, they also haven't shown us. Oh no, they've shown a couple of minor things that look a little bit like a almost actually quite a lot like the the, the previous a link between world style dungeon, but you're just doing it from the third person perspective. I think there's one bit of footage that shows something a bit like that. Because I mean, um, there's that bit of the start of the game where you're in inside, but that doesn't really count, I guess. 
<laughs> that's really the only interior bit of footage I've actually seen of that game. Well, they haven't really sp- spoken too much, as far as I'm aware, about how Link upgrades this time. Well, no. You know, is, does it follow the classic heart container path at all, or does it? Do, do you have to do some dungeons once you've actually you, got got a bit more health under you? Well, it's like you have equipment now, so there's that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so it's a real interesting one. Does it curve? Like, you know, does it? Does the difficulty of some dungeons get harder if you've gone and done other ones before it, or you know? The trouble is, if they don't have, if they do go for the the 3DS style like unordered dungeons, that kind of inherently makes it a little bit more difficult to make the story as important. Yeah, because like if you if you're just like we because the if you if you don't have an ordered structure to go through the dungeons, then you essentially. I mean, the way the 3DS one does it, I guess, is just like when you come out of a dungeon, a thing, a little scene plays out just wherever you are. Yeah. It doesn't really care where you are. It's just like these characters are going to turn up and say a thing or whatever. Well, yeah, you just have to have a sort of somewhat... Well, yeah, that each dungeon or each zone plays out as a mini story, right, with a tiny little yeah. hint as to what the next bit might be. But then that kind of like and... doesn't really lend itself so well to like the normal structure of Zelda stories, I guess. Where you're like gradually building up towards fighting the big evil thing. Yeah. But, or, like or there's steps t- along the way. There's progress. And there's a that's twist. Very normally, precisely you know, yeah, metered right. out. Yeah. A minor twist or a minor re- or a reason to go somewhere else or I re- that, that, I reckon some of that stuff will still exist. Because if you think of, like this may be being called an open world Zelda bright, but but on some level, Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, they're kind of open world games. They not just really. have a they just have a loading pause between some sections. They're not really open it's... world though, because they're like there's always it's more like a Metroidvania where it's like there's an obstacle that prevents you from going to this place that you've not meant to go to yet. Like here's this road that's blocked off by a bunch of rocks. Oh, you need bombs. <laughs> I still think that'd be fine though. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't make it an open world game. Does it? Is, is that the is that the definition of an open worldy? Like, I don't know. Like, a, a certain element of those games is a bit open world to me, right? Like, it's just a little bit gated. You can still go anywhere that you can at that time. There are a lot of bottlenecks in those old, but unnecessarily for the way it was. But if you think of Skyrim, you could pretty much just walk. Yeah, can't you? Could pretty in much any go direction. anywhere. And yeah. just go yeah. into a place. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure that's always a good idea. No. But, yeah. Well, no. Yeah, just what so I reckon. I'll have to. I reckon this will be somewhere in the middle, like between true open world and like in the Skyrim style open world, and and like a Zelda. Yeah, clearly the most game. Clearly It'll be the, somewhere in the middle. Clearly, the most important question about the idea of open world though is how are they going to handle like locations and going back to things because it's like the classic Skyrim and Fallout problem of like you discover the point on the map and then you can walk to it but then like then you have to remember whether you've cleared it or not and whether you need to go back there and what what <laughs> skills you need to get into that place you have to start making notes of where you need to come back to because I couldn't get in there before the classic overworld problems how are Nintendo going to handle this because theoretically they haven't had to do it before <laughs> you hint heavily when you get the ability to o- unlock a new area I'm just hoping they do it like more like uh, in Sony Twisted Shadow Planet <laughs> where they just literally put the icon of what you need to get through this place on the place uh, at the door <laughs> where it's like you can't open this door because you need this <clears throat> icon and then once you get that you're like oh right now I can go back to that place on the map that's very clearly uh, marked they sort of do that in Metroid as well don't, or at least Prime where you like yeah, you, the, door the, the, the coloured doors sure. are on the map yeah this is like, so, oh, now I've got the wave beam, I know I can get through that purple door. Oh, I had, that purple door doesn't have any map behind it. That means I haven't been through there. I mean, that's where that's what where that open world annoyance comes from for me in like stuff in in you know Fallout and such, where it's just like because you can go anywhere, if you discover a map icon and then don't immediately do everything at it, you're like, how am I ever going to remember that I haven't cleared, haven't done the content of that place because it's just mm. an icon on the map amidst all these other hundreds of icons. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, I've, I've been in this hole and so it's marked as done or whatever or this particular, whatever items on the map might mark itself as Or like I walked it past the... it and it discovered it but I didn't actually go in you it. You didn't actually do it. Because yeah. I was doing something else at the time and then <laughs> like how do you remember to come back? Yeah. That's where that actually open, open world becomes a problem. 
Well, it's games, not locking I'm, you out of anything. I'm surprised some of those games have never actually just gone full on with a proper note taking system to be like, mark this area and be like, write, write me a memo to do with this area. Like, so, you, so when you're looking at your map, you can see like, oh, I've got a memo about here. What, what's that about? And then you click it. It's like, yeah, come do this thing. Yeah, that. And it's like, they, they, that's not that difficult to. I mean, I suppose it doesn't lend itself well to consoles no. that well, but um, I don't know. Switch been, has a touch screen. That might be okay. <laughs> sure. I mean, there have been a couple of games that have done something. I think, like, maybe even one of the. Other handheld Zelda, like the Phantom Hourglass or something. Like oh, one hand. of them has a you can write on the map. System, yeah, right yeah. on the map. Yeah. Mm. So that yeah. would make sense. Maybe. If they need to do that, I suppose. If it's not just like a built-in thing where it just tells you. Because mm. <laughs> writing notes is sometimes important. Like occasionally, like the last time I rummaged through my pile of random papers with notes on, I was like, oh, what's this note? Well, oh, it's my list of places I need to go back to in Golden Sun. Because it's like, I yeah, don't, right. didn't have the side powers, so it's like, I'll, I'll just write that down so I don't forget. Because especially in Gone Somewhere, it's just like, it's just a town somewhere yeah. on the map, and there's no actual indication of anything to do with completion. As, as is classic for that style of RPG. Yeah. So it's just like, write a note about it. Tell yourself to come back there later. Yeah. <laughs> Most annoying if it's something that's actually incredibly useful that you need to come back and get. Then, then of course, you run into the uh, <laughs> the secondary problem to that, where you like you don't know what you need. Like, there's definitely some of those notes in Gone Somewhere. It's like I'd written down something that looked like I could do something, but I didn't know what the thing I needed to have to do it was. <laughs> it's like there's probably something here. Maybe you'll know what to do in the future. <laughs> mm. so, yeah, Zelda. Zelda. Looking That's forward to it. Out soon. Oh, yeah. say what we're like, March third. Like, yeah. So in a couple of less two, two and a half, months. two and a half weeks. Yeah. So after the next podcast, you'll get to hear about Zelda. Nice. But in the meantime, check out our YouTube channel for more videos and shit. And uh, we'll catch you for another Salacast in a couple of weeks. Uh, yes, might we'll not with Zelda, Apple. but I'm sure with other stuff. <laughs> Well, I'll probably have started playing. Oh, you no. finished Black Flag, lol. No. <laughs> exactly. Well, I might have finished Joe Danger. That's what <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll catch you then, listeners. Bye. Bye.